Hey, what's up? And welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 5, Episode 15. Today we're talking about Pinocchio's Revenge from 1996, directed by Kevin S. Tenney. I'm Joe Lascola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Welcome to the dumpster. Joe, did you know? What, what? The year 2022 is the year of Pinocchio, apparently. Oh, that little wooden boy is coming to life, Sean. He's going to get you right in the pussy with that nose. <laughs> <laughs> Keep telling me lies, baby. I, I think that, honestly, I, I'm going to go right into the MDU bullshit. You go for it. I think we're, it's going it's to hit hard this episode. Uh, yes, there's going to be some more semantical stuff when we actually talk about the movie. Yes. But I think the character Pinocchio absolutely is in the MDU. And I say he's right up there with Creature as an antagonist of Dobby's. Uh, you think so? Him, him and Creature, I think, are kind of hanging out, okay, poking and prodding. They're, kinda, you know, what they're like? They're like that guy Jeremy from Ghoulies Three, the okay. Hitler youth. They're like, they're, <laughs> they're making the other guy, like they're making Skip look like the Fall guy, okay. So they're playing tricks on on Dobby to get him shot by Chernetsky and, right. and Haggerty. No, Dobby, it wasn't, it wasn't Dobby. I didn't put the. Uh, the ice cream in the oven? I don't know. Some weird <laughs> random shit that just popped in my head. I don't know. I did, I did not eat your chicken, Mr. Charnetsky. Boom, gets blown away. Pinocchio's You're out there. You're full of fucking shit, you little elf and hooten. <laughs> did you do it, Pinocchio? <laughs> no! His nose is bare. <laughs> and then Granny's fucking bent over ready for that fucking <laughs> schnoz. <laughs> Bring it on, big boy! <laughs> well, right there, Mr. Wooden Boy. And, and you know, uh, Haggerty sitting there just drinking it all in, smoking in his cigarettes, and then disappearing into the mist like well, that Homer gif. I don't know if I'm into this, man, but uh, it's whatever. I'm just going to, yeah, okay, let, let it be. I know? mean, he, speaking of Goalies 3, at least he's not that guy Barkus. He's outside <laughs> fucking the car oh, while they're he's inside. Out, he's outside the wizard's castle with the fucking yeah. binoculars on the on the, uh, <laughs> on the the tree branch. Yeah, you just hear the, the creaking of the van. Yeah. Right outside the window. Oh, Bonnie, Bonnie. Oh, yeah, Bonnie. Yeah, uh, put that little wooden man's nose inside you, old lady. I uh, see. So, you know, if you're a fan of the show, you know that when Pinocchio came into the MDU, I mean, he technically is in it, and we're already, we're going to get to that soon. Yes, but this is the multi- but, you know you know it's going to these jokes were coming out. This is the multiverse of Pinocchio madness, dude. <laughs> it really is. It is. It is because we have we have fucking uh, Joe Petto. <laughs> And and and, Mickey Rooney, yes. and Pino from from Silent Night Daily Night Five that we right, covered, right? And I definitely in my notes mostly wrote instead of Pinocchio because I'm not writing that every time. <laughs> Pino or Pinocchio <laughs> was kind of my go-to. That's the stuff, Pinocchio. Yeah. Um, and then we now we have a Pinocchio in this movie, right. and then of course there's all the other multiverse uh, Pinocchios like the Jonathan Taylor Thomas right. one, the one from uh, the Pauly Shore one, <laughs> Butter, <laughs> uh, which came out this year. One of the many Pinocchio films yes. that came out this year. That came out, I think, in like May. It's like a musical with Pauly Shore's Pinocchio. Yeah. Napoleon Dynamite as his fucking pony. There's some other names in there. That's fucking weird, man. Yeah. I think it's weird because in that one, I think uh, Geppetto is played by Tom Kenny. Right. But then right. there's another Pinocchio movie coming out by the guy Mark DiCarlo, who's right. the voice of Jimmy Neutron's dad. Who's I think he's writing and directing that. But then Tom Kenny's the voice of Pinocchio in that movie. Right. And you can like barely find any information about that one yeah. out there. But it's then on there, IMDb. There's also the one that just came out, the Tom Hanks as Geppetto yes. one, where oh, it's just basically the fucking remake. I'm like, this is like Disney's been on this kick lately. And like, I don't really have anything to add to the conversation that everybody else hasn't already said like i saw beauty and the beast with like a friend like a, a couple of that me and my wife were friends yeah. with in theaters and i was like oh it was good but this was pointless and then they made like three more after that and they did lion I'm king good. and shit like that i'm like i, I just don't care which, which lion king i heard everyone hated it but it made so it's like an avatar situation it made so much fucking money they're like we need to make more of these because most the average moviegoer is going to see that shit yeah you know it's I only guess. it's only the assholes online that are like get yeah, fucked this movie, yeah. you know, people like us. Uh, Not really. On a quick aside about Avatar, since I did mention it, yeah. I, I recently edited an Avatar video uh, for Cinemassacre that James uh, did. Basically, he was like talking about, oh, is this movie overrated? Is this movie overrated? Uh, James, it is. Uh, you're not he's not watching folks, but it is James. It's overrated. But with that said, it's coming back in theaters like uh, September 23rd, which yeah. is very soon after this episode drops. Uh, I was talking about it with uh, with with uh, my wife and I was like, you know, I'm I'm not an Avatar fan. I, I have a moment in my memory where we watched that as a family. And I, this, I was a little bit more pretentious at the time. It was about 10 years ago. A little more. I definitely was more pretentious. I feel like I've definitely calmed down a lot in my 30s. <laughs> I'll admit it. I'll admit it. 
But I was just talking shit that entire movie, which, uh, sorry, mom, dad, Kyle, Michael, and the rest. Uh, I was a real asshole. So I'm going to revisit Simon, it. Simon Theodore, he apologized. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to revisit it. But my plan is, since the movie's so fucking long, because I, I never saw it in 3D, just fucking every hour go out and just get baked in the car and come back. Because, oh, you know, I'm really not missing much. No. And that's the thing. Like, I, we, we talked about it briefly. Yeah, but, yeah, it, yeah. you know, when that came out, just going to fucking Avatar. I know, yeah. Avatar Sorry, side fault, tangent. But... No, but like, you know, James Cameron like invented essentially what oh, became yeah. the 3D camera and the mocap shit and all that stuff, uh, you know, made new technology for it. And that was kind of the draw oh, yeah. for me, like just as like an effects guy and stuff. I was like, that's fucking cool. Yeah. The movie itself is just kind of like it's whatever. Like, it's okay. It's like dances with wolves or like fern girly but like more blown out i wouldn't call it either of those things yeah, riffing on those concepts that have been done a million times I, I, yeah but, but but like it's just an okay movie with a really uh spectacular uh vfx uh revolutionary vfx uh uh, uh, uh you know stuff yeah oh yeah, yeah 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 like the team and the the things they came up with almost the like com- a, the a computer gra- works yeah, the- or a, a weta kind of situation oh yeah like industrial light and magic yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. That, yeah uh so anyway that that was your avatar five minute uh recap or something <laughs> i don't know who gives a shit uh, yeah i don't the know the fucking sequel is like 20 years too late well, it's coming good. out in december I, I that's the other thing i gotta get ready for the sequel and i never saw it in 3d so here's my opportunity to finally see it in 3d it's beautiful it's Absolutely and it's gonna beautiful. Be in, uh, maybe not 4K, like 8K or some shit. They up it. It looks, it looks good. Yeah, anyway. Great, because we need that. And now, these messages. This week's episode of Movie Dumpster is sponsored by Cavity Colors. <laughs> hey, Sean, do you smell that? That sweet, cool breeze carrying a hint of pumpkin spice on it? <laughs> Ah, yes, the scent of the spooky season going through my nose holes directly into my brain, Joe. Halloween is finally upon us this year, but you know what? Every day is Halloween at Cavity Colors. Cavity Colors, you say? Oh, you know it. Those fine creeps are creating high-quality collectible items dripping with horror nostalgia. They've got your favorite horror franchises and fully loaded apparel collections to feed your maniacal movie needs. Check out their brand new collections to ring in the spookiest time of the year, including... Halloween 3, 40 Years of Terror. Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat. And get your pre-orders in now for their newest collection. The Halloween and Halloween 2 Double Feature. With art by Devin Draws, Jert, Steven Rhodes, and Dismay Design. They also have some other great collections featuring killer clowns from outer space. The Thing. Predator. Child's Play, Godzilla, and more. Head on over to CavityColors.com slash Movie Dumpster to grab your horror swag now. And use promo code Movie Dumpster at checkout to get a spine tingling 10% off your order. Share your passion for all things spooky all year long by shopping Cavity Colors. But uh, back to Pinocchio. Imagine Pinocchio anyway, and Avatar trying now, to fuck one of those Navi. Now back to quality cinema. <laughs> ah, bend over, Natiri. <laughs> hey, you big blue cat. What are you talking Jake Sully? Oh, maybe. So, fucking uh, <laughs> Sam Worthington's off on the side. Oh, 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 not, not, not Natiri. Yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> Go back and check out our Terminator Salvation episode if you want to know what we're talking about. Wait, so are the Navi like the Blue Fairy for Pinocchio? Oh, to bring it back to Pinocchio? Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. maybe. She makes him, she's like, she's like, we'll transform, we'll take your soul out of the wooden doll and put you, like like a child's play situation, okay. and put you into one of the Navi. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you know they, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I could see that happening. Like, oh, oh god! All I gotta do is be a good boy, and I could be a giant cat person. I'm and live in the most beautiful place where people were killing themselves. They wish they lived here. Oh god! Yeah, in real life. Yeah. Yes. I'm a real navvy. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, so anyway, yeah, the, the the Tom Hanks one came out. I guess is where where I started with that. Yeah. Uh, don't know if it's any good. I'm not gonna watch it. I, I'm good. Tra- uh, trailer. Ha- I was like, okay, it's. I'll just watch the original if I really need my fix and see yeah. Pinocchio smoke that cigar. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm excited for the Guillermo del, yes. Guillermo del Toro one. I'm interested in that. That I think it's going to be a Netflix or a Hulu, uh, uh, John, uh, but I think so. I, I think so. But, uh, you know, it's I like supposed the, to be more truer to yes. like the book and stuff like that. The book, the, the story, the original story is it's fucking interesting. insane. Yeah. It's nuts. There's a lot of weird shit. And Pinocchio is like a total asshole. Oh, yeah. Um, and he like he at one point, like there's a there's a cat. Or, or no, wait. I think it's like a fox and a cat or some oh, shit. Oh yeah, they come and like they, they 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 trick them basically. They trick them, but they like they're like planning to like mug them and they fucking hang them by a tree, like by his throat, and they're like waiting for him to die and shit. Oh and they like God. steal his gold and shit. It's fucking crazy, I don't remember dude. That. It's in the. I read it the, at one point. It's yeah, in the yeah, story. Yeah. Um, that one looks cool. It kind of reminds me of James and the Giant Peach, like the yes, anime, the stop yeah. motion style that he went with. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious. I, I don't is know if I'm gonna rush out. I'm rush out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. rush out to my TV. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm gonna watch it, but if if you do, let me know if it's any good or any dumpster dwellers, and and then maybe I'll go check it out. Is it a stop? Mo is it stop motion or is it CG? I, I think it might be like a Coraline kind of situation, but is it I'm, like a studio studio? I'm, I don't know. I'm really not sure. It, it has I that look to it though. Yeah, but I haven't really like done any research. Right, if it if it's just CGI it. meant to look it, yeah, yeah, that I don't know. Um, but with that being said, it's the year of Pinocchio. Yes, right. Into the Pinocchio multiverse. Here we go. You ready for this? Because baby, we're talking about the fucking Kevin S. Tenney classic, Pinocchio's Revenge. Right, right. Kevin S. Tenney, who we've had on this show a few times now. Uh, well, once. Well, not him personally. Well, no, but he we only had really, really only had this. Is oh, I forgot. He only did the first. Night this is the second right. film that we're actually doing. We talked about Witchboard 2 yes. and we've talked about uh, 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 Night of the Demons, of course. Well, Witchboard 2 was adjacent because uh, we did Ticks, which will come up a little bit later. Right. Again, uh, that Amy Dolans was in, but we interviewed Amy Dolans for the Ticks episode and she talks about uh, working with Kevin oh, yeah. and, and uh uh, working on Witchboard 2 and stuff, and she said, the, remember the photo shoot for the cover? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she, maybe I could it's just right to your left. It's yeah. right over here. Hold on, where is it? Oh, and she, right, and she yeah, talks yeah. all about uh, this uh, this cover for Witchboard 2 where she said it was real fire at one point and oh, like yeah. almost burned her fucking hair or some shit. I don't know. Go listen to that Amy Dolan's interview that we did uh, about to and listen to the Ticks episode. He, um, he also directed a movie that I now kind of want to at least check out uh, or maybe doing the show called Peacemaker from 1990 featuring Robert Forrester and Robert Davi. And they're basically like, based on the trailer, it's like two aliens come to Earth and one's like a, is a bad guy, but the other one's like the cop. But because they're causing so much damage going after each other, it's just like, who's really the bad guy? And like Robert Davi's like the police ch chief going after him. Yeah, that looked the, pretty sick. I watched the trailer. That's a movie I couldn't remember on our uh, live show. Oh, okay. Peacemaker is Peacemaker, what it was. Yeah. And it's like, the it, it, Kevin says that it was written before The Hidden, which we need to cover with Kyle McLaughlin about the two aliens. The one alien comes to Earth and the good there's a good alien and a bad alien and oh, the one okay. bad alien is like a serial killer oh wow guy it's all the hidden fucking rules okay. uh, we should totally cover that um but uh yeah peacemaker was written before that but i think it was made after the hidden came out so people were comparing it a lot one of those kind of but situations. then also like it's very indicative of alien nation the series okay. and the movie which i think uh who's in that the guy the guy from um, he's definitely in something we covered but in I don't robot jocks what. yeah yeah yeah. Uh, what the fuck's his name i don't remember i forgot his name but the the main guy from robot achilles from robot jocks is in alien nation right, yeah, it's like yeah. the main cop yes he teams up with like the alien cop which they did, they did a movie and then the actual it was TV a, show. yeah it was a movie and then a TV show yep. yeah um so that's that's kind of cool I would I would yeah. like to check out Peacemaker for sure maybe it'd be doing it in a mini or something I, yeah I love Kevin Tenney and I love I love uh, all of his work even the seller like with that one like he was brought in because they fired the director of that and like he was brought in to finish it but like even that one's fine like I I I, I like that movie it's fine which we should probably cover it's pretty cool it's like a um. It's like a Native American kind of legend monster huh. creature feature kind of thing. It's kind of cool. Okay. So. Sign me up. Yeah. So Vidmark releases this, but this is a Trimark Pictures joint. Okay. So because of the success of like Leprechaun and stuff. Well, sure. Yeah. They want Child's Play, I would have to imagine. Well, Child's Play 2 comes into it too. It's not Child's Play though. I mean, I'll get to that in I'm my final influ thought. Influence, I can and, say. Well, Kevin didn't want to do anything. If he was going to do a movie like this, he didn't want to do a Child's Play. Mm. And, and uh, you know, Trimark asked him to write the screenplay and direct the movie, uh, which was originally called The Pinocchio Syndrome. 
which I think once you actually watch the movie is a way better title. I think the punchline of that is like so good because you're like, what the fuck is the Pinocchio syndrome? And then yeah. at the end of the film, it's like, oh, that's pretty awesome. Like that, that really works uh, well, once we get there. Right. Because I, I this name that, that we get, Pinocchio's Revenge, is very striking and you do remember it, <laughs> well, but it doesn't really make any sense once you watch the movie. Hold on. Hold on where's my cigar? <laughs> Oh, Kevin, you got get yeah, with the Pinocchio. What the fuck is the Pinocchio? Hey, Pinocchio's Revenge. It's like that Child's Play movie. Uh, yeah, there you go there. With the, with the V with the blood on the yeah, end. The, yeah, yeah. Like Why a fucking not? knife. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. And like, as a kid, the cover's cool. As a kid, this caught my attention. Like on the oh, yeah. on the on the rack, you know. And this was right. In the, I guess we could talk about that a little bit before I go any further, but like this, th- I used to rent this all the time. Mm-hmm. I say that every time. <laughs> you do. How but many, it's like, true. Did you have like a like that watch from Harry Potter where you could turn time he- backwards to watch more movies? Here's the thing, and we never really talked about it, and I think I might talk about it on that uh, mom and pop uh, documentary oh, that, yeah. that Bobby Cagney did, but like when I was a kid, movies were like my babysitter, mm. right? And like, and like there was a lot of things going on in my life uh, when I was young, uh, especially when my sister was born and stuff to where the point where like I was kind of being occupied by things. And I think that's where my love of movies come in all of these stuff because I was always we'd always go to the video store and I'd sure. always get a movie or a multiple movies. And that's what I did with my time mm-hmm. um, or like playing video games. and stuff. Oh, yeah. But. um, I think that's why I'm so I, I, I'm always like, oh, that one. Oh, that one. Oh, yeah, that one. I yeah. mean, that's why I'm sitting here talking about it on sure. a fucking movie review show. <laughs> Uh, talking about these films and how the why and how they're special. I mean, look around. Anyway, um, but this one in particular, uh, I remember uh, renting around the same time. Now, I used to be scared as shit of toys coming to life. Right, that which was I think you mentioned before. Yeah, yeah, that was like one of my biggest fears as a kid, and I mentioned that Alf dream before that I had. He like, <laughs> right. he, yeah, when I, yeah, I look it up. It's in it's in the MDU lore. Uh, I somewhere. might even be on the uh, the you probably talked about on a main episode, but it was definitely on that Alf yes. Halloween special on Patreon. The Halloween special, I think uh, I talk about two, the two dollar tier, by the way, and you Patreon. can hear all about that Alf dream. Um, <laughs> hear all about the dream. <laughs> hear all about the dream. Um. But this was this came out of time. It's ninety. It's ninety six. Mm. I'm like, what? How old are we? Like oh, ten or eleven? Somewhere in there. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And I'm finally getting over my fear of Chucky mm. and dolls and like Stuart Gordon's dolls. And this is the, this is kind of like my therapy, my my the revolution that I have uh, in my life where I'm taking the I'm facing my fears right with okay. these killer toy movies right so I'm renting Child's Play and Child's Play 2 and Child's Play 3 and I'm renting Dolly Dearest and I'm renting dolls Stuart Gordon's dolls the Hug a Bunch obviously yeah of course yeah and Pinocchio's Revenge of course um so that's kind of like where this ties into Joel Escola's lineage of this of this film and timeline okay. of the timeline um but this was when I was a kid the trailer for this scared the shit out of me and I really didn't fully grasp the concept of this film until mm. later. And then I was like, oh, it's pretty brilliant. And then yeah. go- and then going back and rewatching it, I was like, oh, this is pretty brilliant um, for what he was trying to do. But we'll get to that a little yeah, bit later. Yeah. So Pinocchio in the film is uh, created by Gabe Bartalos. One of my favorite uh, FX guys. We've talked about him before. Yes. He's he's. He's the guy behind a Belial from Basket Case and Aylmer from Brain Damage, which we'll get to at some point. I definitely yes. want to cover that. Um, uh, and and the the uh, the Leprechaun makeup. Yep. So that kind of ties back to the Trimark thing. Um, so he comes in to do the Pinocchio stuff. This is also scored by uh, uh, Dennis Michael Tenney, who is who is uh, Kevin's brother, oh, okay. who also scored Night of the Demons. Now Night of the Demons has a very like iconic memorable score and this is not too bad i actually like the music in this yeah for what yeah, it is it's good yeah it's definitely, the main theme's kind of cool it's definitely like more low budget s yeah uh but it fits what they're going for I mean, it's kind of got like what you would think would be like kind of a pinocchio horror movie soundtrack honestly yeah well it's like mid 90s i think it's orchestrated i'm pretty sure it's yeah, orchestrated. It feels like i'm, it I'm is. trying to remember and like it, it is a good score though yeah. i do remember that and then the last thing I kind of, unless you have something else, I want to nah. just round this out. So, so of course I have my tape, but this movie comes out um, on full screen DVD. And this is the only disc version of the film. It's a four by three fucking rip. Um, it definitely looks better than the tape. It's not a VHS rip, but it's also a four three rip. I think it looks 
pretty good it for looks, what it is. I mean, for what it is, it's fine. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a Metal Beast situation. Like, it looks good, but you wish you had that uh, that higher res yeah, copy. Yeah, but even Just Metal... Just to see some stuff better. I mean, because this has a lot of scenes, especially towards the end, which is done somewhat intentionally where it's really dark. And I would love to see like that on a Blu-ray where you have like HDR kind of kicking in. Well, I, I definitely want to see this like in widescreen. Oh, that's for too. sure. I mean, cool. I think it I think it deserves. We can get to that a little bit yeah, later. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But um, it, you can still get this DVD. I think it's like six bucks on Amazon. If you like if you really want to own this movie, Put which that I in your think, best buy cart. I think you should. I mean, for six dollars. I mean, fuck it. Right. I don't know. I don't think it's available online to watch anywhere. Again, as of this recording, it was not. We had to rip the DVD. To, oh, that's to, right. To yeah. Watch it. Well, you told me you couldn't find it. I mean, it might be on one of those like fucking, you know, shitty sites where they like yeah, put the free well, movies up yeah, with all the yeah. porn ads and shit it might be in there <laughs> uh, you get to look at Alessa Milano's ass a little bit in the bottom right it's, corner it's possible yeah uh but yeah but like for six bucks I mean fucking it's a it's a great buy for six bucks it's definitely worth six bucks yeah a hundred percent I mean if, if you're gonna rent it for that if it was uh, on like yeah, Amazon yeah. you like, might as well just buy it I, I guess the only other thing I'll just say yeah. uh my only real experience with this film was I watched it a few years back probably with Joe and then I rewatched it, I think, last year or the year before. And I was a like, few oh, years. Probably like probably like 12. six or seven years. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the point. <laughs> you, you Ten say, years ago. We say that and it's like, oh shit, yeah. like two, 2010 was getting old. Fucking almost. It's 20 years ago. Know, 12 years ago. Holy yeah. shit. Uh, and then I watched it again, like I said, like like about a year or two back. Yeah. I was like, that holds up. We should cover it. And then we just been talking about it ever since oh, then. We, yeah, we've been talking. We talked about this a lot on the show. Um, and now it's finally here. Yeah. Um. So with that being said. I'm going to plot crunch this one. Go for it. Because you did the last one. Well, actually, actually Justin Silverman did in the Good Burger episode that you oh, can watch well, now. Well, you also did the but Ghoulies. I did Ghoulies. Yeah, you did yeah. Ghoulies 3. Yeah. Ghoulies Go to College, which you can watch right now. Um, okay, so Pinocchio's Revenge. Um, a little girl has a traumatic experience because her uh, family has just split up. Uh, her, her mother and father. Uh, her father has moved away, and the, the mother is a um, career woman. She's a lawyer. She's a criminal defense lawyer. And there's a lot of uh, problems going on at home and, and coping problems for this little girl. Um, so there is this guy uh, who is accused of killing his son. And when he ki- when he's accused of killing his son and brought in, he they also find this doll, this Pinocchio a puppet. Excuse me, not a doll. It's a puppet. Um, so uh, the mom accidentally gets the little her little girl entangled with this puppet and she in, uh, entangled entangled yeah, there you um, go. and yeah and she grows like an affinity for this puppet and, and a bond with this puppet right because she's lonely and whatever right, and all that yeah. kind of stuff so it's this weird thing where like it, it, this this puppet is like attached to this murder and then there's this you know this psychological thing going on and is this doll alive or is it not i don't know we're going to talk about it but did, yeah did, that's pretty much it I was going to say there's going to be a part in this review where it'll be very clear there will be no going back, but we'll we'll get there. Oh, yeah. There's the point of no Uh, return. Yeah, that the movie tries to make it anyway. So we open up in Tampa, Florida five years ago. Yes. On this dark and stormy night. Uh, This movie opens in a way that you think is like this movie gets dark in in places, but damn, it starts really dark uh, because there's just this dark, dark, like visually or dark, like Uh, tonally. Both actually, both, but (laughs) there's this guy out in the middle of the woods uh, in a raincoat. uh, It's downpouring, uh, burying his son. And I guess the cops come up and they find him and he's just standing there kind of like. (laughs) <laughs> this fucking cop it reminded me of kind of like bride of chucky in the beginning a little bit little a bit. little bit but um uh, you know it's like pouring outside it's oh, fucking yeah, god this cop almost hits uh bruce springsteen's pink cadillac that just parked <laughs> on the side of the road and, and like and like right next to it is like a is like a road close sign but it's like yeah. this clear road that you could just drive down like oh, why yeah. the fuck didn't this guy get out and like unlink the chain and just drive down a little bit to get off the road or, 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 hey, uh, Kevin S. Tenney, maybe just shoot from a different angle. But, hey, what, what do you know? Well, the, well, I guess the cop needs to find him. So sure. the, it's like a rookie cop. And he goes out there and sees this guy burying his son and uh, takes him in. Then it cuts to, like, the next day. And the police chief's like, well, great work. Great work, whatever, whatever. 
So they end up finding the kid's body, but then they they're like, "Oh, we got another one!" And they dig it up, and it's the fucking Pinocchio puppet. Uh, yeah, in the hole. I also, want to note that this cop. I'm just gonna say because there's something that's gonna come up later that this is fucking Kaminsky. This this movie takes place in the unknown uh, name Norm universe, by the way. So I'm gonna just assume this cop is Kaminsky. He's eating a Zagnut. He's finding a dead kid, and uh, you know that'll be relevant in a little while. Because five years pass. It's it's true. Uh, we go right to the courtroom. So we fast forward, like you said. Yeah. And um, we get we're 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 at Vincent Gatto's trial. Now right. it's not it's not Joe Petto, it's not Gepetto. No. It is Vincent Gatto in this Splinter timeline of the Pinocchio multiverse. Uh, yeah, they, he changed a couple initials, <laughs> yeah. but he's definitely a, a relative. He's played by Louis Van Bergen, by the way. Okay. Who is, uh, he plays John Whitney in The Relic. Still haven't seen the damn Relic. I so, gotta watch it. I gotta so, freaking so, watch it. So this is great, man. This is great for the MDU because when we do The Relic, John Whitney is the Cathoga in the relic. Oh. So so Vincent Gatto from Pinocchio's Revenge dies and then becomes the fucking Cathoga. You can't make I, I it like, like that shit. I, I've watched the trailer, but yeah. maybe I should just watch the fucking movie and get it out of, yeah. out oh, of my man. system. Have you never seen the relic? Never saw it. Oh, never man, it. it's great. You, it keeps you, coming up. You're going to like it a lot. Um, But yeah, he plays Vincent Gatto. We get introduced to our, our main character, I suppose. Jennifer, this defense attorney. Uh, played by uh, Rosalind Allen. Yeah, Rosalind Allen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from Ticks. Yes, she, she was played, our main character yeah. in Ticks. And uh, yeah, Holly from Ticks. Holly, right? Yeah. Uh, this character, this fucking character, man. <laughs> uh, honestly, knocks the movie down a peg for me. I'll just put that up front because this woman, her heart really is in the right fucking place. Is it though? I, I think it legitimately is. And that is why she should not have this fucking job because like I get that like listen I don't know anything about like how defense attorneys work other than what I saw in Better Call Saul and what I played in Ace Attorney. Usually they're pieces of shit. Right. Yeah. Or or at least maybe you're like not taking the serial killer case, but I guess they're trying to imply that it's like well, she's trying to prove his innocence because the case doesn't add up. Yeah. And she's saying, well, he admitted to killing his son, but the M.O. was different in all the other bodies. It's also that weird thing of like trying to find the good in people, right. question mark. Or like if people are wrongfully accused, I guess, maybe. And, and, and maybe what I'm saying now, you're like, Sean, what, what is the big deal? She's just doing her job. Well, as the movie continues, I start to realize, OK, I understand you won't want your client to just get the electric chair. <laughs> Because maybe there's a chance that you're covering for somebody. Maybe. I mean, maybe. But but then she does some other shit towards the end of the movie where I'm like, lady, did you get a degree? Do you know what the fuck you're even talking about? Oh, she knows about? what she's talking about. We'll get to I, it. There's a scene scratcher, later. Man. There's, a, there's a scene later that, that proves that. The, the, the fact of the matter is she's too... She's um, in denial or something. I don't no, know. No, she's, she's too emotionally attached to these cases. It's true. The, well, the that problem. is very true. Um... You think this is, this is like right before ticks, right? <laughs> she she fucking she she's a lawyer, she's a defense lawyer. She finally just throws in the fucking towel after the events of the end of this film. She fucking dates, starts dating Peter Scolaris, right. and they they form a retreat thing, and they they end up with uh, uh, Seth Green and uh, Alfonso Ribeiro out in the middle of the woods, and then have to fight mutant ticks. It lines up, yeah, because of things that happen at the end of this film, and she she's. She's got the time to go. Hey, she's she, she's got she's got the time to go. She's got to start a new life, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Without actually saying it, yeah. Uh, before we keep going, uh, Larry Cedar, by the way, is the is the defense for the other side of this of this right, okay. case. I just wanted to bring him like up. the people or whatever. Well, not the people. He's he's well, yeah. I, I guess, guess. the or, victims or of the, or of the victims. The yeah, victims. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to bring him up because he's like one of those that guys. Oh, okay, but specifically. He is in the gremlin suit in the Twilight Zone movie, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet with John Lithgow. Wow. Yeah, the um, the George Miller directed yeah, yeah, yeah. segment. Classic. Oh, it's so fucking, that used to scare the shit out of me as a kid. It's still fucking scary to this day. You never thought you could top Shatner, but when you get Lithgow in the fucking pocket there, man. that That is like one of the all-time best anthology segments of any oh, yeah. anthology movie like ever. It's a shame there's all that other horrible shit surrounding it. R.I.P. to Big Morrow and those other kids in the pilot book. I would still like to cover that at some point. It still is very good, but that's just that fucking giant black cloud over the over the movie. For yeah, me. but still good movie. Still a great movie. Yeah. And Vic Morrow. Well, we could talk about great. it if we cover yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but he's also the snake man 
in Dreamscape. He's in like the Snake Man suit. Huh. Yeah. Um, but has he played an alligator like Kane Hodder? No, but he has been. He is already in the MDU. Do oh, you know? Is he? Do you know what he's from? I have no clue. You sure? Uh, when you say it, we'll see if I'm shocked or not. It's very, it's like, I was like licking my oh fucking my fingers. It was so Can't tasty. Wait. He's the fucking manager of the Chunky Chicken in Demonic Toys. He's like, oh, the guy that's on the phone? Yeah, he's like, he's like, is that a cigarette you're smoking? He's like, no, it's your dick. And he fucking throws a cigarette <laughs> at him. Yeah. Charnetsky's always mouthing <laughs> off at this guy when he calls. <laughs> Put, Get me my honey and roll, you fucking bastard. Put Mark back on the phone, hammerhead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's yeah. pretty great. It's fucking welcome awesome. Welcome back. So welcome back. Now he's a defense attorney. He moved up in the world. Yeah, he's moving up. He's sick of getting yelled at by Charnetsky. Also true. Um, so yeah, so so after the trial, uh, they lose the trial. Or they go to something and she else. She wants basically like some more time to prove that, well, let's, let innocent. me appeal it and say that, oh, the appeal. well, you charged him for being a serial killer, but yeah. I'm arguing when he's not. And the judge is like, all right, I'll give you two days. Well, or whatever the time she's frame is. She's trying to prove that he killed his son. <laughs> But didn't kill the other kids. Oh, right. Because she's she thinks she's covering for somebody, but she doesn't know who. Yeah. And he won't say. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a little later. But but the fact of the matter is she's a pretty good lawyer because she's like, hey, all of these other murders have a completely different MO and they don't line up. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, And the only one is his son. And like, why would he choke his son to death? Well, the other ones were like beaten to death. Blunt force like, trauma to right. the fucking dome and like all over the place, like random. Right. So then we go to her house. Jennifer takes her, her work home basically with her. Yeah. She's looking at some crime photos. She's like, okay. She's on the floor, like in the living room, and she's got all these fucking dead kid pictures all over the place. And her little daughter. I'm thinking of like Batman with the Joker or Vicky Vale with the fucking crime photos sure, all over. Sure. But you have a fucking a young daughter, yeah. a young and eight, eight year old daughter. Eight by year the old way. daughter. You just you just went through a fucking divorce and you have all the shit strewn out and and, and, and you're and you're so busy you have a living fucking uh babysitter, uh, by the way. Yeah. And you're just like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, all these dead bodies, kids but, cut off and well, shit. Well, well, but it's clear she's burying herself in her work. But my point yeah, is, well, right. my point is, Zoe comes in. Zoe's the little girl, her right. daughter, uh, played by uh, uh, Brittany Elise Smith. Um, and she's just there, and she sees all the fucking crime photos. She's like, oh, that was all dead kids, mom. And she's like, oh, I didn't know you were awake. <laughs> and it's like. What are you doing? Yeah, and then she's like, yeah, by the way, Mom, I had a nightmare where Dad and his new girlfriend were butchered and killed. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I killed them. Yeah, oh, I say? killed them, yeah. or something like that. And she's like, no, honey, that didn't happen. Yeah. It's by just the a way, dream. Don't worry about it. You're yeah. not crazy. Yeah, by the way, yeah, you're not crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, how come when Dad called, you didn't want to talk to him? Ah. Uh, well, we'll get back to that a few more times in the film. Don't worry about it, Ma. Because I thought I was dreaming about his decapitated head on my desk. I, I, no, or she doesn't something. say that, but yeah. But, um, but, but the point is they're trying to set up, like Joe's kind of alluding to, that, you know, this woman is so drenched in her work that her kid's just like starving for attention and is just doing some really questionable shit. Big time. And she's just like, ah, uh, well, go talk to Sophia or something. Go yeah. get your little orc uh, uh, stuffed animal and go tuck yourself in. <laughs> go fuck yourself. Go fuck that circus peanut. Oh, God. Real quick, before we before we jump over that, uh, Brittany Lee Smith is the voice of, she's in a Goofy movie. Oh, really? And she's the voice of the little girl that Pete's like trying to do the photo shoot. <laughs> When she's like crawling all over yeah, the place yeah, and he, like yeah, straps yeah. like Velcro to her ass and like sticks her to the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I thought that was funny. I actually remember I thought she was the little girl in Rumpelstiltskin at the end, but it's not her. At least she's oh, not, it's, she's not credited. Yeah, it's not as her. That. Yeah, I do remember that though. Like yeah, um, when they find the box, like Jumanji at the end. Yes. So the next day, Jennifer she goes into work. And she goes to her desk, and this fucking chair spins around. It's got this Pinocchio doll in it, puppet, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Vern Troyer, as we find out later. Marionette. Yeah, Marionette. Uh, and she's like, what the hell is that? She, she just about jumps out of her skin. This woman gets scared of everything, by the way. It's like thundering later in the film. Just, ooh, ooh. Well, I mean, that's pretty fucking freaky, man. I don't know. I was like, I get people. Are, my, to be fair, my grandma was terrified of thunder, so maybe I shouldn't mock. But I was yeah. just like, all right, lady, you're a fucking defense attorney. Can you calm down? <laughs> so Ron Canada walks in. Oh, God. As, Ron Canada. As Barry. Yes. Uh, also from... Home, he's in a ton of shit specifically though Home Alone 2 yeah. uh, the second I saw him I was like why does this guy look so fucking familiar he's like the cop when Kate McAllister's like please if you do you have any kids 
I got two kids myself. What would you do if your kid was out there? I'd be doing, doing the, the same, same thing, thing as you, lady. It's that guy. So, <laughs> so this that, that that's what happened. He he like he went, you know. He he talked to the Miss, Mrs. McAllister, and then he like moved up in the ranks. Now he's uh now he's I don't know what some type of uh attorney or yeah, or yeah. something Ch- changed uh, careers changed careers. Good for him. There you go. Uh, yeah, he he's like, yeah, yo, oh, that's all that stuff you asked for. Remember, you have that case you gotta do. Like in the next like forty eight hours, this guy's getting executed. Oh yeah. There's also this weird, vague thing that runs through this. Well, we'll we need to talk a little yeah. bit about. There's it. There's a lot of vague Be- things. before I before I bring it back oh, up. Yeah, yeah. But then we go to school. Oh yeah. And we're reading uh, Matilda, and there's like right, and, and we get introduced to like the antagonist to Zoe. Oh, right. Her bully. Yeah, her bully, like her this girl Beth and like this group of girls that like always give Zoe shit and stuff. Um, they're real fucking assholes, man. They're, they're and they kind of they kind of yeah. get what they deserve eventually. Well, Beth does. Yes, but also <laughs> again, it's a fucking eight year old. This it's isn't a, the Willies. It's a hell of a comeuppance, dude. Should have fed her to the goddamn uh, janitor <laughs> and the Willies at that point. Oh, there you go, uh, dude. Yeah, 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 Mr. Jenkins exactly. is coming around. Uh, yeah, this little girl is an asshole, but maybe she's just the thing that happens. We'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, she's like a bitch to her. And it's kind of this funny thing is I'm sure you've all dealt with this in class or maybe you were the Beth. Uh, where, where Fuck you if you were the Beth. <laughs> where Zoe is uh, basically asked, like, what what's the story about? Because Beth doesn't know the answer because she's passing notes. And yeah. she answers it. And she's like, yeah, this is what it's all about. And she's like, not like Beth. She doesn't know. And the whole class, like, laughs at well, her. Well, she's she, like, has this. She's eight. She has like this very philosophical like meaning behind this what happens in this Matilda story with right. like this mirror. Oh stuff. yeah, she like really gets and technical like, with it. Okay, and, and then like they're like, oh, next week we're gonna read Doctor Doolittle, and she's like, oh, she's like, oh, that's great because Beth loves to do little. That's what and it was. was. Like, oh, oh, sick bird. But then, like right after class, she's like handing out birthday invitations to her party. She's, she's so sweet, and yeah. like I don't know, it's just so fucked up. It's good acting. The little yeah. girl's great, yeah. and uh, Beth rips the card out of her hand. And she's like, "You're not invited, you fucking bitch." Yeah, she's like, "Where's my invitation?" She fucking throws these invitations to like a puddle of mud. Oh my dude! Then we get the fucking Mike Tyson Evander Holyfield <laughs> moment when when she bites the shit out of Beth's ear. Do you think there was an executive at Trimark that was like, "Remember when Leprechaun was gonna bite off uh, uh what's his face? Is he make a boot out of it? Let's bite off this guy's ear." Well, it too. definitely wasn't like Rump where the eyeball got ripped out, mm, but yeah. it was definitely I, I could see the Leprechaun comparison. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so then she's like picking up her her car. She's like, "Yeah." She's real really dirty. Upset. But then, like, she gets in the car and Ro- Rosalind Allen picks her up from school and she's like, Oh, anything happened at school? She's got like blood all over her lip and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And she's like, I don't want to talk about it or whatever. And like, you, th- like, you can cut the tension between these two oh, with, yeah. with a fucking knife. Like, it's in the air. It's so thick. Um, so then she goes to her shrink. I don't remember this guy's name. I just called him Doc the whole time. Well, before that, they go- she goes to the prison and she sees right. Gatto. And like, again, like we were saying before, like, she- she's trying to get um, a- an appeal. For his case. And she's like, look, I know you didn't murder those kids. Like, who the fuck are you covering for? And this guy, he's a great oh actor. God, man. He loses it. He's fucking awesome, though. But like, uh, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, nobody. There's nobody. I killed all the kids. I don't know what you're talking about, lady. Like, I should be just kill me. I want to die. He's I killed my son. Just, I killed just my kill son. Me. Just fucking kill me. He won't give up what the fucking deal was. Like, he doesn't want people to think bad of his son, I guess. What we find out later, what, or what it alludes to, that? or what it alludes to later. We don't ever actually get a confirmation of that, but she comes. No, but that, but but I want to talk about it later because we have to come to the culmination of the story. Okay, before okay, we can fair really enough. Talk, fair enough. Dissect that a little bit. Yeah, you know no, what that's I mean? fair. Because then we're giving away the goat. You know. What okay, I mean? okay, yeah. But he he slams on like the glass, and then the, you know he's like, I did it. Just fucking end end the case. Yeah. Stop fucking trying to protect me and just kill me. Right. But he finds out that like she finds out that you know he made Pinocchio for his son because he's like a woodworker. And, like and Pinocchio a, a was his son's favorite. They make a was, point about yeah, that. Yeah, he like made it for his birthday and all, all this kind of shit. Right. But they never, th- that's as far as they go with it, which I kind of like. And then we go to the, the shrink. Right, this doctor character, which I didn't, you know, I just would call him Doc the whole time. His name his name's Aaron Lustig. Okay. And what's even funnier. In, in relation to Bill? Uh, No, I don't think so. Okay. Maybe. But what's even funnier is he is Dr. Brown in the relic as well. <laughs> So we got two all, fucking characters the in the relic. relic. Connections, yeah, man. it's kind of weird. So I guess maybe that's like a producer thing or like a, a studio thing or like somebody knows somebody, I, I think. Yeah. Well, it, 
dumpster dwellers wait for your MDU lore dump when we finally get to the relic. Well, this is fine too because we're well. Let's let's just ca uh, canonize this in the MDU lore that he is also he in for serious he plays the psychiatrist in Edward Scissorhands as well. So, what is he? The MDU's fucking psychiatrist. He, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh my god, there that's scary is. thought. <laughs> At least he records all his sessions, Joe. Just know, to be is, safe. This is true. So, so in this scene, we kind of fake, we've kind of uh, find out she was really close to her dad, right? And that he, her dad is kind of the person that was always kind of there for her and like keeping it together because mom was like a workaholic and still is. clearly didn't have time for the family, but ended up getting the kid, right? Right. So, so dad's kind of not the bad guy in the situation, but it clearly didn't work out between him and mom, Rose no. and Alan. Um, but you know, Rosalind Allen isn't really perceptive at all and doesn't pay the proper attention to this little girl. Oh man, like, she doesn't even know when her fucking birthday she is. She forgets her fucking birthday. And I'm like, oh my God. Right. Like, yeah. Cause when she gets like after her, uh, shrink session, uh, she comes home and like mom confronts her about biting the fucking little girl's ear off. And she's like, fuck you mom. And she's like, well, okay, go to bed. And she's like, you're grounded for two weeks. And like Sophia, the, uh, the babysitter. Yeah. Yeah. Is like, uh, you know, her birthday's Friday. Friday she's like, oh, I, I got please. Well, she's grounded till Friday then. Shit. So Sophia, yeah. Sophia's Candace McKenzie, yes. by the way. Yeah, she plays like their Italian live-in babysitter? <laughs> question mark. Okay, we'll, we'll get to it. Like, it kind of makes sense. It a works little, a little later. Like, the, Kenny, Kevin makes it work. Yes, and like they show like a scene where she's doting on Zoe when the mother's not, and you know Zoe runs to her room crying, and the mother's just like, ah, whatever. And Zoe goes in there and she grabs that orca stuffed animal, Walter, yeah. I think yeah, it's called. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you always want to sleep with Walter. It's okay, Zoe. And uh, she tries to comfort her. Well, okay. So this is this is kind of like that kind of subtle thing here because she's like, oh, do you want to sleep with the, I forget what the pig's name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's like, no, I don't want to sleep with the pig. He's mad at me because we had a fight. So this child is already exhibiting behavior of, of kind of uh, giving personification to these Right, right, inanimate objects because she's so lonely. Oh yeah, and kind of building this whole like world in her head, uh, the but life, you... the life that she kind of wants yeah. and kind of needs. I mean, kids do do that, but it definitely is planting that seed. Well, she's anthropomorphizing these toys because there's people missing from her life. Oh yeah. Now, like again, her dad was seemingly keeping her stable. Now, mom has just completely ignored her. She's going through all this trauma by herself. I mean, even the psychiatrist know? says to her when he's yeah. when he's talking to her, he's like, "You got to forgive him." Yeah. She's like, forgive who? Yeah, and like the kid is obviously in denial. Right, like yeah. he's trying not to say it exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so right after that, we go to the fucking Gatto execution. <laughs> Jennifer's there to watch it happen. Dude, he's walking the fucking green mile. He's got no shoes on. Mr. Jingles is there. He gets the fucking blindfold and everything. Yeah, it's like fucking the faces of death uh, <laughs> execution. Yeah, like, well, as they're leading them in, Ernest walks past. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be okay, pal. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. He pa he passes Nash on the way to the yeah, fucking chair. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and it's pretty it's a pretty powerful scene because she's sitting there watching this whole execution and like she knows that he didn't do it and now he's going to his grave. Oh, without finding out the truth. You know what I mean? But then in then in the next instant, she's also like, ah, eh, whatever, big deal. Oh, they cooked this motherfucker. Oh yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> he's fucking cooked for and sure. And she's like. Ah! Like, what were you going to do? Yeah. It's done. It's over. She goes to the church. Yeah. She, <laughs> what, did I, what, did I, what did I do? Yeah. The Southbound Shovel Slayer and fucking <laughs> Kevin are there talking That's about saying, birds man. knitted on a sweater. And um, and it's weird. Oh, you know who this guy is? Oh, the this priest. Is, yeah. this is the. It's not the priest, but just to tie the MDU back, this is fucking what's his face from Vampires? Uh, the guy that, that like, works the, the, with James the young, Woods? The, yeah, the young priest the, with the, the glasses. The mahogany guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he wasn't the one that said it, but... He, getting a little wood there? You starting to feel that Pinocchio? Or what, we <laughs> feeling like Pinocchio there? He's got Pinocchio in the, in the confessional. I've been a real bad boy, yeah, Mr. Priest. <laughs> you feeling the wood? He's like, ah, uh, in a few places. Uh, downstairs, upstairs, all over uh, the place. You getting a little wood there, Father Mahogany? I don't know why that's his voice now. He sounds like a fucking, like, gangster from New York with a squeaky voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pokes out the fucking guy's eye. Whoops! Ah, Pinocchio's in trouble. So, so she's shitting there. Sit, shitting there. She's shitting there with this. She's sitting there with this uh, uh, priest. And like, it is the pew, Joe. Well, what I found interesting was like, even like in The Exorcist, like Demi is a psychologist. <laughs> which why which is why that movie works a little bit better, right? Yeah. So, I, I, for, by the way, what I'm, it is. I'm not laughing at what you're saying. I'm just immediately my brain goes, Demi. 
Why yeah, you want to do this? Why you do this to me? Which is actually a fucked up scene, but me and you, that's like an old. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Joke. Demi, why you do that? Yeah, anyway, um, but you know, they have this conversation. I think it might be a little bit later, but we don't need to. She fucking... meets him a second time. She later, meets him a second time, yeah. but like they go into the fact of like, do you believe that evil is uh real? Right. Or it comes in all shapes and sizes or anything like that. Or like the idea of why... Pe- well, I guess we can get that a little bit later. Yeah, we can get that a little bit later. Okay. Well, she, of- she, take, she takes him out to coffee and she asks him like about Gatto. Yeah, she, and- yeah, yeah, about Gatto and like do, why he would be capable of that and all that kind of shit. Well, she even says like, you know... It, it, she comes to a different conclusion later, but she says something like, you know, oh, well, did... Did his son walk in on him while he was committing one of the murders and it was a spur of the moment yes. reaction and yeah. then he didn't know how to live with himself. Yeah. And the priest is like, well, we don't know. Yeah. He didn't say anything and now he's passed. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, because like I said before, the kid was strangled and the rest of the kids were like beaten to death. Right. So, again, we get more exhibitions of like Zoe's like repressed hostility and shit like that. Well, well, we have Jennifer. She's like after that meeting with the priest, she's like back at the office with like the yeah. puppet and she yeah. like can't wrap her head around it. Yeah. So she's going to take the shit home for a minute. I don't know why she does this. She just takes it with her. Oh, oh, because the place is closed till Monday or some bullshit. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. The place is closed till Monday or some shit. Later, later, we'll get to it. But anyway, the Pinocchio dolls in the back of the fucking car. Right. And now it is Zoe's birthday. Yeah. And we, and like she's driving home to Zoe's birthday. And she's oh, this got, is a weird scene. And she's trying to pick up all this cake and stuff. But but. When I was a kid, I thought she didn't know Pinocchio was in the back of the car. Oh. And she, like, hits it and, like, pricks her finger. That, and it's was, like a that was bizarre. Yeah, but, like, I thought it, it has, like, a child's play vibe to it. You know what I mean? Like, a hundred percent. You know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of this movie, they want you to think it's a child's play type movie. Well, a hundred percent. I mean, look at the packaging. Yeah. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, she gets home and she's, like, exhausted, but she's, like, oh, the party's getting put together. Yeah. And you get introduced to her boyfriend, David. Who's uh Todd Allen. Right. He plays Dollar Bill in Django. He and he's oh, really? like, yeah, he's like a he's like a big like actor. Um, I didn't realize he was so prominent. Um, but yeah, I had no there idea. I think he's good. He's good in this. Yeah. Uh, but he tells her, "I'll just handle it. You go, go get changed, take a shower, whatever." Well, she gets home and she's all flustered and shit, and she's like, "Oh my god, the party starts! You know, the kids are coming, and like I got all this presents and shit." And it's like, why didn't Sophia do all this shit? <laughs> she's got Zoe to deal with. She's uh, a handful. Uh, 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 yeah, I guess so. I she's got know. a shower. Uh, she's yeah. got a lot of showers she's got to do. <laughs> she's in that shower. She's fucking Rumpelstiltskin. That's what she's doing. I hope not. That woman, yeah, I, I would not put that on her. It's possible. So so the party happens, and um, David ends up giving Zoe the fucking murder Pinocchio <laughs> puppet, like from the murder as the doll, and he's like, oh, this is great. This thing is great. It looks like it's hand-carved. And she's like, ah. And Zoe, like, loves it. So, like, immediately I- falls in love with it because it's like a little person now. Now, that's another thing. None of the other toys look like people. They're all animals, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, now it's 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 been elevated, like, her her, her uh, mental uh, uh, problems have been elevated with the fact that this thing is, like, actually uh, person-like. I guess, in yeah, my I, opinion, I can see that. I think it was on purpose. I, I'm just sitting there, like, as an audience member, like, yeah, the the guy who's a serial killer that murdered like 15 kids, strangled his son, and was just fucking executed, carved this by hand. And I'm not gonna. I, I know you maybe don't rip it out of her hands, but like the fact that she's just so like, ah, oh, uh, well, I guess she's happy. So whatever. When there was like, it was buried with a fucking child. <laughs> by the way. Did you she, forget that detail, Jennifer? She just lets Defense it, attorney. She just lets it go. She's like, okay. The, I understand the, plot, but come on. The other thing is she's convinced that Gatto didn't do that. Didn't kill either of them. Uh, like He's the kid now. the kid or the other kids. Oh, wow. And like, how can somebody who carves something so beautiful be so crazy? And I'm like, it's possible. That's why I'm saying There's a lot of serial killers that are right. that are artistic. That's, you know what that's I mean? why I'm saying, like, you know, she she comes across as in like in denial. Like, I don't doubt that she's actually she's a good fucking, at her job. She's a but... fucking fool, yeah. and that's the problem. But it's an emotional thing that like gets in the way of like the the rationality of the situations. You know right. what I mean? Well, exactly. Uh, her boyfriend, by the way, I, I forgot that detail that I set up earlier. Is David Kaminsky? Not just David. 
So his brother found the body years back when he was still working with Anthony Michael Hall. Uh, I found the Pinocchio. Uh, and his brother, David, uh, started his, a landscaping company. There you go. That's fine. The Kaminsky brothers. Yeah, right. That's it. That's the joke. Let's <laughs> <laughs> we'll play like in like a high C or something like that. <laughs> anyway, there's a it's, there's a zag nut involved. Of course, of, yeah. obviously. Oh yeah, then we get this fucking. Well, scene. so 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 she gives Sophia the night off because she, she wants to fuck David right? <laughs> on the couch on next the, to the couch, fire. Next to the fire. I mean, I don't blame her. You know, mom yeah. wants to get some. I get it. She's like, God, David, screw me. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> Spoon me, she says later. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you said screw me. <laughs> That same difference. Stupid line, but yeah, she yeah. does say it. That, she's, that, she's like, oh, spoon me. Yeah, well, he did more than that. Well, she he sure uh, did. So then Vern Troyer Pinocchio standing there watching. Uh, yeah, well. And not, then you pan to the left and, oh, wait, no, it's just Zoe it's standing just, there next to the puppet. It's just Zoe with the puppet yeah. and they're yeah. trying to fuck. So, so they end up putting her to bed and she's like, hey, can Pinocchio stay in my bed? And she's like, no, you no. can't sleep with Pinocchio. And we and I told you he's just visiting. We got to bring him back to the fucking uh, police well, station. That is true. She does at least do that. That's, yeah. that's fair. But she doesn't enforce it at all. Well, we, she needed those damn headphones that Jill Sholene had in the Stepfather because <laughs> they're fucking so loud. And she's just Dude, sitting there like with like her coloring book. Like I had flashbacks to Munchie Man, Gage Dobson oh, listening God. to fucking Elliot Carlisle fuck Lonnie Anderson oh, upstairs no. with the door open. That's what's happening here. This poor kid is listening to them fuck in the other room. This big sensual sex scene. Oh, God. It's traumatizing for this kid. <sighs> so then David tells like a Pinocchio story. Oh, well, yeah, 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 Well, that's before they fuck, but yeah. Yeah, and he's explaining, like, the basic like, story about Pinocchio was a was real bad. scumbag, and he was really, really bad, and he's also a killer puppet. Ah! And he, like, scares right. her. Right, he's like, now he's coming after you! Yeah, yeah. spooky. <laughs> God, you know, I just thought of an amazing Pinocchio kill. What? What, like, Friday the 13th, when uh, uh, Kevin Bacon gets the arrow through the neck? What if it was Pinocchio's nose? Nose? Oh, he sharpens it? Like, <laughs> it in- oh, 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 oh! <laughs> Puts it in a fucking like pencil sharpener and then like stabs him or cuts through his mouth like a reverse blowjob. Mm. Anyway, that just had to get that out into the. How about a little wood? (laughs) How about your mahogany? (laughs) That's his kill line. Oh, yeah. You want your mahogany, James Woods? Here I come. Butter up your biscuits. It's, I'm inserting it. I'm the president of the United States. I went to space. I'm a million years old. He just keeps lying, says like one lie after another. And then <laughs> the guy's like, whoa, whoa. There's that butt fuckers from the Good Burgers, the Fun Ruckers rip off. Yeah, he ends up looking like fucking that chick from Cannibal Holocaust, like oh impaled my on the fucking thing. Oh, that, that's a scary uh, scene. Oh, and the whole time Pinocchio's like, <laughs> I think Pinocchio might have to make an appearance on the Christmas uh, and trashing through the snow this year <laughs> as a gift. <laughs> Dobby's <have> gift. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Dobby's very afraid. <laughs> So it's super clear now that like Zoe, like as a viewer, like Zoe's completely, she feels completely alone. Oh, yeah. And like Pinocchio's like her wants to be her new brother and all this. She's like, oh, we're going to have a now we have a fucking family now and everything's going to be nice. Well, while she's hearing, you know, mom and David bang in the other room, she's like, she hugs Pinocchio and she's like, I wish you were a real boy. Yeah. And he and then they like, they do this like pan onto the eyes. It's like doo doo doo. Like, yeah, you're also lead to be- led to believe that like the power of her like intention brings this thing to life, right? At this point, okay. So the, the, the next scene is the scene of the fucking movie. We cut to Sophia in the shower. What an ass! What an ass, man! A full bush. This is like let, Predator Two all let, over again. Let me tell you something. Holy shit! You see the fucking beaver, and you see the clam underneath that. You see that whole motherfucking thing. It's like, oh, there it is. I'm waiting for the music to hit. <laughs> the fucking George Michael. <laughs> that sax- yeah. Careless whisper. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my god. Careless clam. There Usually, this kind of stuff doesn't get to me. Usually, I'm the type to be like, "This is, shouldn't be in the movie." It shouldn't be in the movie. But at this this particular time, my mouth was a gape, and uh, yeah, okay, very attractive woman. Uh, they they focused on her ass for a while. Uh, no I think, complaints. Uh, uh, if not as long as Al- 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 Alyssa Milano, about the same amount of time. It's just, it's just kind of strange. Well, this kind of. I don't know why it's in the movie. It, well, it's in the movie because it, it, it. So she comes out of the shower, and she's fucking buck naked, <laughs> right? And she comes out, and Pinocchio's sitting on the bed, and Zoe comes in, 
And she's like, what are you doing with my Pinocchio? And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? He was sitting on the fucking bed. And she grabs it and she runs out of the room. And she's like, what are you doing in my room? Yeah, like, get the fuck out of here. So then she's confronted later by Rosalind Allen. And she's like, why are you in Sophia's room? And she's like, oh, Pinocchio wanted to know. She, it's the whole like child play thing. Like, oh, Chucky uh, did right. it. And it's like, well, Pinocchio wanted to know about women's bodies. Uh <laughs> Because we heard, because like, because we heard you fucking David last night in your room, and, and, she's and like, all those uh, jokes those movie dumpster guys made. I just, <laughs> I had to know. And then Munchie told me about Gage. So, it's I don't just, know how I feel about that, but yeah. okay. And then so the whole thing where like, she, you know, Rosanna was like, oh shit. She's like, oh, well, do you want to talk about it? And she's like, nope. And she just leaves, and she just lets it go. And it's like, uh, yeah. you are a bad fucking parent. There is a reason why you and your husband split up. Well, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> no, she gives her that fucking doll. I got you the real present. Yeah. The real doll. And she's like, the one you mm, wanted. Oh, yeah, yeah, that she like put on pre-order or something. In her KB fucking toys. Yeah, uh, next uh, to the fucking Turbo Man yeah. layaway. Uh, yeah, she she does leave. And then I it might actually be a little bit later. But uh, she finds that doll like under the bed mutilated. Like well, something out of Small Soldiers. Yeah, so she tries to give her the doll. And... She's like, I don't want it. I want Pinocchio. And she's like, you're just trying to take Pinocchio away like you took daddy away. Oh, and it was up. like, oh, man. This is my fucking problem is she obviously knows something's wrong with the kid. She's going to a fucking therapist. Well, right. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then she's like going to bed that night, you know, yeah. the night before she's going to give the puppet back, mom. Yeah. And she hears like this pitter patter and she looks up and Pinocchio's at her bedside. She's like, oh, okay, you can sleep with me, Pinocchio. I'm now, like, okay. now we don't see it move. It's just appear, you hear it and it appears right, there. Yeah. And it's not talking or anything like that. She picks up and puts it in the bed and they go to sleep. Right. And she's like, oh, she's like, uh, I know you'd never leave me Pinocchio or whatever. Yeah, there's you a know? lot of that. Yeah, there's a lot of, the, she had, She starts growing this weird attachment to the, to, clearly, to the, to the Pinocchio puppet. So somehow Sophia doesn't get the fucking memo that this Pinocchio doll is government property. Can you believe, like, <laughs> so, so Zoe takes the fucking puppet to school. Or, or the, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I'm like, Sophia's like, have a nice day. How did mom not get up before everybody? Right? I guess because every day Sophia just takes care of it. So mom's not even thinking. But like, that's so fucking ridiculous. And it's like, she's like, she yells at Sophia. She's like, you let him take the doll to school, the puppet to school. Well, and like, also like at this point. You should have fucking took it this morning. Or started, like while Zoe was sleeping and put it right. in the, you know. I agree. But like, it's also at this point in the movie, you could tell like Sophia, like. She's not trying to like lose her job, but you could tell she's like getting kind of sick of the bullshit with the mom like yelling all the time about the kid. She also has to play both sides of the fence because she has to play nice with the kid and make sure but she's also an adult. <laughs> well, well, that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But she's like, somebody has to be an adult. Right, but she's definitely rolling her eyes like, oh my yeah. God, like really you're going to yell at me about this? So they find out that she takes the puppet to school and Rosalind Allen finds the fucking other doll right, that's that she, she bought stuck mutilated. under the fucking couch and she pulls that out. It's all fucked up and it's like, your child has something wrong with right. her, okay? She just decimated this fucking toy and stuck it under a, a thing. Like, she's obviously destructive and violent. Like a Sid. Like, straight up. Yeah. Uh, and then, if that wasn't clear enough, we go to the, the, the school. And, of course, immediately, Beth steals the Pinocchio doll. And, and throws, it over, throws it over a fucking fence. And then they'll go, oh, oh, Pinocchio, Pinocchio, where are you? Runs in. And then we have this, this fucking scene. Where it's Pinoc pretty great. Pin I love this scene, Pinocchio dude. Pinocchio grabs a rake. No, it when it when she gets to Pinocchio, his hand is on a, on rake. a rake. Oh yeah, excuse me. Yeah, super glue. You know, or well, you have to say you have to say that because we never actually see him like grab I it or know, anything like that, which is intentional. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the fucking rake goes through the fence right as Beth comes by on her bike, and this girl right in the fucking spokes, dude. Yeah, this girl. Almost gets her fucking head run over like a cherry by dude. this bus. It misses by like a fucking millimeter. Dude, she launches off this bike <laughs> into the front of a bus <laughs> and it runs over her. Oh, it does run over yeah. her. Oh, okay. I thought she it was fucking, just almost crushed her head. She fucking eats shit and like flips and the bus runs over and she's underneath the bus. How is she alive? Because she didn't get run over by the tire. Thank That's goodness. brutal. Uh, and then, you know, she runs home with the, the fucking Pinocchio doll. Oh, no, she runs to her psychiatrist because then the psychiatrist calls mom and is like, yeah, uh, Zoe just showed up. But but Barry comes in and they have like a back and forth. And she says, oh, and why'd you put that puppet in the back of my car the other day? And then like he doesn't say anything. And it's this weird thing of like, did the puppet put itself back there? Did Barry put it there? But Barry never confirms or denies 
either of those things. I mean, I think he just says something like he doesn't say anything. I don't response. remember. Yeah, no, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, I, I so, don't know. So you don't know if the if it's alive or not. I guess. Yeah. So then, yeah, the the yeah the therapist calls and uh, he's like he's like yeah she has the the puppet she's here she arrived unannounced and she goes there and she's like she's saying that she's like the we, puppet pushed her the girl in the front girl of a bus. In front, and he's and she's like she's not even supposed to have the puppet like it's part of this case thing I got to bring it back to him and he's like if you separate her and that puppet right now it could be like devastating right. for her like she could have like a mental fucking breakdown well what does mom do right when they get in the car what did you do. Oh! But I didn't do it. Pinocchio did it. And mom's like, yeah, okay, it was Pinocchio. Uh, yeah, my fu- daughter's fine. Yeah, my oh, there's nothing wrong with my daughter. She's fine. Meanwhile, the audience is like, what the fuck is even happening? And it's like, all right. You, Not necessarily in a bad way. You keep digging that fucking hole deeper. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're going to end up like Vincent Gatto with your fucking daughter in a hole. Well, okay. <laughs> so now shit starts really heating up. It, it, Beth almost dies. But but survives. So Beth almost dies. She almost. It, but then we have the, we have one more scene with Rosalind Allen, and she has another revelation about evil and how why what compels people to do the evil things that they do. Right. Well. So it, so so we're in prison, and we're back with the other attorney from the beginning, and fucking Robert Winley's there as like this biker guy who like killed this fucking drug dealer. Do you know who this guy is, Robert Winley? No. He is the fucking guy from T2 in the bar that puts the cigar out on Schwarzenegger, but he's also in Stone Cold with Brian Bosworth. Oh, man. So he's in the biker MDU, boy. baby. Oh, he's been in it many hanging times. Hanging out with Charnetsky at the yes, fucking biker yeah. bar. That was and, his bike that got stolen. Yeah, hanging out with fucking Lance Henriksen and the biker crew. Oh, of course. And I'm convinced that this takes place during uh, Stone Cold. <laughs> like, he was brought in. <laughs> he was part of that raid on Congress. Yeah, yeah he was. Okay, okay. But um, yeah, as you were saying, yeah, this guy literally, they're saying, mur- killed his victims by hanging them on meat hooks like Leatherface and then torching them and burning them to death and then recording their screams because he enjoyed it so much. And they're playing the, 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 the recording yeah. and he's literally <laughs> laughing at it. And again, this is why this woman is horrible at her fucking job, because then slam cut to her puking in the bathroom. Well, it's because he was sickened by it. Sure. Why wouldn't you be? But then immediately walks up to the uh, to the uh, the other guy, the 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 not the defense attorney, whatever. The other guy. Yeah, the I other attorney. the term for it. Yeah. Uh, and she's like, uh, I I can't hear my client's uh, voice on the tape, so it won't be admissible the in court. The plaintiff. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, uh. yeah. And I'm like, I guess like you could argue. I guess she is really good at her job for doing that. Yes, but that's it, why I was. That's my argument. Right. Yeah. Which, but I'm just like, come on, like. I, I guess I just can't wrap my head around defending scum, but I guess someone's got to do it. No, I fucking hate that, too. Right? Like, yeah. I, I think it's a shitty job. And, like, putting her juxtaposed to that, like, I, I always, guess that's why people always hate lawyers and, you know, forever. People at least hate, in, people in hate criminal defense lawyers because yeah. they're fucking pieces of shit. Because they're trying to prove that that person who committed the crime is innocent. Right. Which when, they are sometimes. Sometimes. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But definitely not in this movie. Not in this case. Um, But she has this back and forth with him. The, the 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 guy the the biker guy and she's like taking notes and she's like uh she's like well what drove you to do it he's because she's trying to figure out stuff for the case and he's like it's like the box the box told me to do it lady and i'm like edward Nig- edward nigma's box i know I was thinking clearly he bought that from fucking jim carrey I mean, he does say that it's he's referring to the TV, and yes. the TV was not plugged in, but it did speak to him. So <laughs> what other answer could you have? It was the Riddler. I got that blender on the TV. The diddler told him to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I sucked his dick while he was doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Virtual cum sucking. Oh, my goodness. Um, uh, VR VR uh, experience. Um, so she's like, and the she's like talking well, to this client, and then yeah. she like calls home, and she's like, well, 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 well before she calls home, uh, she she's writing things down on the oh notepad, God. and he keeps telling her, oh, the TV told me to do it, and she writes a giant letter, and she's like, insanity, like, defense. insanity defense, and then like circles it, and he's like, he's like, I'm not crazy, lady. It was the box that yeah, told me. She like just like, oh. But yeah, then she calls home and she's like, yeah, I'm going to be late, Sophia. Can you just do dinner? And Sophia's like really over it. She's like, I have to get my fucking green card updated. I told you this like yeah. weeks ago. And she's like, oh, that's tonight. I'll oh, call man. David. All right. I'll call, yeah, I'll call David. So then, you know, David. So David babysits. And he's laying on the couch, just hanging out. But she's late because she goes back to talk oh, the to church. the priest. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is when she changes the theory. 
yeah, there's this whole thing where uh, she 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 asked the priest, like, you know, what is evil and how is evil affected? And like people who are crazy and do these things when they say, you know, the the voices told me or like son of Sam killer, like, like the right, dog told him or yeah. like or like uh, the, the, the TV told him to kill. Like who's to say that that's not like demons or something uh, possessing those items and, and influencing these people, which has been a point of contention yeah, in no, yeah. real life and like could be and a, a lot of movies in a, in a lot of movies in a lot of real life cases um like like that annabelle uh movie uh that the we did a commentary track yeah. on uh <laughs> patreon.com slash movie dumpster five and ten dollar tears with tony from Hack the movie yes the case in point is she's trying to deduce if like being crazy and hearing voices is specifically of the human condition and like multiple personality disorder or some other kind of thing like that or actual influence from outside evil forces i.e demons right. We go, we go from this philosophical conversation where that. Well, actually, before we move on from that, she then goes, "Well, what if instead of uh, uh, Gatto being caught by his son, what if he walked in on his son doing it, and that it was really his son, and that's why he couldn't live with himself?" And the priest is like, yeah, "Well, makes, maybe makes sense, yeah." Which is what happened. Which is the, heavily which, implied, which is the, which is the truth. She's deducing it, right? But and I mean, she doesn't really know, but like clearly, it makes sense. Clearly, for, the audience knows. That's yeah, what's going on. Uh, be, which this is the point in the movie where everything switches. Well, look, before we get to that, I just want to note one thing. Sure. This is this is also the point where she should see the parallels happening between that case and this case. Well, that's yeah, and we never get there as a character arc. Like she never comes to that conclusion, and she's still in fucking denial at the end, at of, the the end of this yeah. movie. Oh, yeah, okay? driving insane. Like so much so, well, we'll get there. Yeah, we're almost there. So much. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. we're at the fifty fucking six minute mark of this hour and a half movie, and uh, Mr. Tenney, I guess that was the perfect time. It was brilliant. to make this puppet talk, it's, and it does work. It, I, I bust a balls a little bit, but it works. It's fucking brilliant. I already mentioned played by Vern Troyer anytime it moves, much like Baby's Day Out. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that shit uh, in a second. But voiced by Dick Beals, who played Gumby in 22 episodes. Is he? <laughs> Gumby and... It sounds like Gumby. Gumby and uh, Davy from Davy and Goliath. Oh, it sounds a little bit more like Davy than it does okay, Gumby, yeah. for sure. Because Gumby's got, like, a modulated no, yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah. You know? But, yeah, he's talking. Hey, Zoe! And we took care of that bitch in school! <laughs> Wasn't so, that fun? I, so, I already lost the voice. So 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 he's like, uh, so he starts talking and you see its mouth moving. It's cool. Shit, and it's fucking creepy. And it's, Dick Beale's voice accompanying this puppet and what it says is very disturbing. Like, it's very yeah, creepy. Yeah, yeah, Pinocchio's like, uh, well, you know, what if, uh, you know, me and me, me and you just, oh, uh, we, we got rid of Sophia and then uh, we can have more fun with mom oh, or, or David. I'll never get to be a real boy and be your brother. We'll never be a family as long as David and Sophia are around. Right, yeah. And it's like. And so he's like, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, and, she, and she's like, no, that's bad. We can't do a bad thing. You'll never be a real boy. And he's like, yeah, but getting rid of David would be a good thing. Right. Yeah, like the classic. Italian Pinocchio. Yeah. Because even we have a scene. The justification for your shitty behavior. Right. Either right after this or right before it, where she's like digging in the fucking uh, garden looking for a cricket. Because uh, the conscious. Yeah, right. The conscious because Sophia tells her, David tells her the story of Pinocchio. But then Sophia adds the line like, oh, the Italian version was more violent. And he actually smashes well, the cricket. He gets, he gets upset. In anger. And he smashes the cricket by accident. Well, yeah. which is important later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so she's got this cricket. Just well, just she's Italian, it. by the way, so it was kind of well, well, yeah. That's yeah. how they kind of slipped it in there to kind of get that in there. So yeah. so you didn't have very like, popular Italian story, by well, the way. Right, but like you also didn't have to have like the librarian guy come in and be like, well, actually, the story of Pinocchio exactly, or whatever, you know, exactly. some bullshit like that. So I thought that was kind of well done. Anyway, uh, so so then so then Pinocchio was like, well, I'm gonna take this uh, into my own hands. <laughs> uh, see you, Zoe. And he runs out the door. And she's like, oh no, Pinocchio! Well, well oh no, well, Pinocchio! Well, yeah, so this thing comes to life and it is Vern Troyer, but like we don't see it just yet. We see it talk. Right, but we don't up see on the face. But we don't see it move. Right? We see the shadow. Like when it's running, you see like just the shadow around the corner. You don't actually see it running. It, and it has like a child's play kind of thing to it. Like especially like Aunt Maggie in the in the first movie when, when Chucky like runs across the fucking hallway in the background. Yeah, and you get some POV shots kind of scattered throughout of, yeah. of P Pinocchio vision or if you want to yeah, call it that. Yeah, So... You 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 see it like going to the, you see Pinocchio go into the basement, and then Zoe comes out and David's there. He's, he's like he's like hey where are you going what are you doing? And she's like oh I gotta get Pinocchio and he's like I'll get him and she's like he's in the basement I'll get him 
Yeah. He's like, no, go to bed and I'll get the I'll get the doll. So he goes downstairs. <laughs> it's, like it's conjuring. It's pretty fucking good, man. Like it's shot pretty well. He goes down and uh, it's it's effectively creepy. He go. He, there's nothing in the basement. He goes upstairs and this fucking door swings and smacks him in the face and he fucking falls down the stairs and breaks his fucking head yeah, on the cement. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of blood too. There's uh, there's a lot, man. And Zoe ends up calling nine one one, and they they save him. Right, barely, barely, just about barely. And she's she's all broken up. Zoe's fucking freaking out because like David's all hurt and like almost dead and shit. And she's at the hospital, and Rosalind Allen comes from work or whatever the fuck she is to 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 see him. Right. So then after they go to the hospital, they, they we get to the scene at home where she's talking to Pinocchio. Yeah. And, and she's she, like, what did you do to David? He's like, I didn't do anything. And then, like, the shadow of the nose grows. She's like, you're lying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like a car drives by and the nose yeah, grows, which yeah. I thought was kind of cool. That like, was cool. Visually. That was cool. Um, and then he's like, he's like, hey, you know what, Zoe? You know, mom would spend a lot more time with us, with us if Sophia wasn't around. Oh, right. That's when he says that. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and then we get this other therapy session. Now, David's in the hospital. And Dude, he is fucked he up. He is fucked up, and like mom tells a the therapist like what happened and all that kind of shit, and and the therapist is trying to get her to kind of talk about it to see what happened at the house. Right, get her talking, yeah. So there's a call for him, and he has to like go out of the room. So you see, it. <laughs> no, he says, "Well, I'm in the middle of a, a meeting with a client." And they said, "Well, when the delivery man got here, you said you wanted to talk to him." And he's like, "Yeah, okay, uh, yeah." He's got my flashlight. I better take this one. <laughs> my ass, Akira flashlight. <laughs> He's Pinocchio flashlight. Mm. It's like a reverse blowjob. Remember we said that joke earlier, but now it's like a vagina. It's just my head and a big dodo nose. Imagine that. It's like a wooden one. He's, ah, I'm getting so many <laughs> splinters. Ah, oh. Maybe that's his kink guy. Who knows? Uh, maybe. So he leaves Zoe in the in the room by herself, and she starts talking to Pinocchio. And he's like- And he is moving. And Well, no, just his- Oh, yeah. He's just talking. Oh, his mouth is moving and shit, yeah. And she's like, she's like, why did you do that to David? And he's like, how could you be sure it was me? Uh, did you see me do it, yeah. Joey? Did you see me do it, Joey? Did Nobody you see me saw do me. it, Joey? Nobody saw me. She's like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Yeah. And yeah. the doc comes in and he's like, oh, you just had an episode, didn't you, kiddo? Right. And this is where he says, oh, yeah, you could cut my strings. You're the well, blue fairy. Yeah, they go back home. Yeah, And, yeah, and yeah. that night he's like, he's like, give me life, Joey. Cut my strings. We'll go save David. We'll see David, and he's, he'll be okay at the hospital. And she's like, "He promises to be good." And he's like, "I promise I'll be good. Just cut my strings, and 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 we'll we'll go together." So she cuts this fucking thing strings, and I remember this so vividly from the trailer because it's fucking creepy, dude. Oh, yeah. She holds it up; it's all silhouette. She cuts the strings. The fucking Pinocchio doll falls off, and it's all silhouette. And fucking Vern Troyer pops up, <laughs> and he's like, "Come on, let's go see David." And and the mom just again is so fucking busy. She doesn't hear her little eight year old running around like a nut. Opening the door, no. leaving, slamming it. She nothing. leaves the fucking house, and the mom's sitting right there. And she, oh, no, come back, Pinocchio! <laughs> Burn Troyer is running down the street in a Pinocchio costume, and it's the funniest fucking in this thing. fog. I'm sorry, but seeing that little man waddle down the street in the fucking Pinocchio costume makes me laugh. I mean, every baby time. Bink still blows it out of the water of the ridiculousness of it. It's but... fucking creepy, Burn Troyer. Thank you for all the yes. joy that you've brought us. R.I.P. Um, for R.I.P. Sure. Uh, uh, but then mini she, me, baby bank, oh God, and so Pinocchio, many great, and many others. The, the, the little missing. Santa, little buddy, oh, yeah. yeah, jingle all the way, jingle all the way. Uh, um, an MDU icon running down the street. It, the, Pinocchio's running down the street, and she's following. He's always following her. These two fucking motorcycles come, and it looks like a car about to hit her, and they drive past her. It's a pretty good shot. They drive down the street. The one guy goes home. The other guy runs into Rumpelstiltskin, and right. we, we know what happens right. there. Yeah, fuck with me and all yeah, that. Yeah, fuck with me. Yeah. Um, Picked up another bad habit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ah, metal steed. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, she, she goes home. She goes home. Now, this kind of throws you for a loop, too, because you see Pinocchio run off. And she's like, Pinocchio, where'd you go? Yeah. Uh, Pinocchio or somebody with Pinocchio vision goes, Pinocchio to, vision goes to the hospital. Goes to the hospital. Now, this we thing may is, be showing our hand a little bit yeah, at this but, point. But we're not quite ready to exactly say it. We're almost there. This entity. This thing, is, whatever is, is going is around doing this. is going around the hospital and like nobody's paying attention. Right. To well, it. right. Again, this is Baby's Day Out logic. Speaking of with, so, with nobody looks below their knees. So whether it's a Pinocchio puppet or a little girl, nobody's acknowledging this thing. Right. 
Anyway, this makes its way to David's room. It makes easy. its way to David's room and just unplugs this motherfucker's life support and he Dude, dies. Like, he fucking dies. Yeah, and it's really fucked up. I thought for some reason there. I think that's another movie where they unplug it and then plug it back in. Where they where like they unplug it. It's probably like, like a fucking naked gun with no, like OJ or no, something. No, I think it's like I think it's a Giallo. I can't remember. Uh, okay, anyway, okay. probably that sounds like something that would happen um, in a Giallo. So so Jennifer's sleeping or Rosalind Allen is sleeping, and she gets a call from David's mother. She's like, "Oh my god, he's dead! Right. They found him dead!" She's like, "What are you talking about? He was fine. He was stable." And she's like, yeah, "He's dead." But then, like, she finds Zoe's, like, dirty slippers, and she's like, what the fuck like, is why this Why are these all about? dirty? And she's like, I don't know. Sophia doesn't know. And they're like, huh. She's like, Zoe, did you go out last night? And she's like, no. And she's like, did you go to see David last night? And she's like, no. And she's like, tell me the truth. And she's like, I tried, but I got <laughs> lost. <laughs> okay, I wanted to go see David, okay? But I got lost, and I came home. Scout your honor. Yeah, oh, Pinocchio like, did. She's like, you didn't go to the hospital, did you? She's like, no. But Pinocchio might have. And then mom's like, stinger. And then, like, cut to her at the doctor. He's like, no, no, none even. He, he's, oh, he calls like, her. He calls her, and he's like, yeah, you need to come into my office. You gotta see this you shit. You gotta see this shit. He's like, uh, yeah, I, I record all my sessions. Uh, <laughs> I stepped out for a moment. Uh, don't worry about that. And then it's like her yelling, having that conversation with Pinocchio. And but it's Pinocchio's just her talking. Yeah, Pinocchio's not talking. So she's actually, she's having a psychotic episode. Right. Okay. And he's just like, yeah, I want to have your daughter committed because <laughs> she's going to hurt somebody. She's like, on my over my dead body. Well, between between the David thing, obviously he's putting the pieces together between the David thing, between the Beth thing, and oh, now yeah. this, like it all lines up, and she's clearly a disturbed individual. Listen, I can understand both sides of the argument. It's her kid. You don't want to commit your kid. I get it. But she's but in also fucking denial. Yes. Well, a hundred, and that's part of the reason why I don't like this character. Yeah. But I also understand why she is sure because she doesn't want. Okay, cat's out of the bag. The kid's crazy. She's clearly doing something. Well, well, the kid's crazy. Okay, fine. We'll leave it at that for now. Yeah, because I want to talk about the supernatural element a okay. little bit later, but go ahead. Um, but, she, but she's in denial, much like she is with her clients. And again, like you were saying earlier, part of that is her just trying to find something. Something in there that maybe this is like, we got the wrong person. Yeah, but she, But then she's like just like taking that same logic into this situation. So I'm like, what are you even doing, lady? Yes, but my problem with this scene is the fact that she's so in denial and not being rational about the situation and looking at the clear evidence in front of her also being a lawyer oh, yeah and uh saying shit like she's gonna make sure to sue him and take his fucking license his like his uh, like yeah. so he can't practice anymore it's like lady i do love his 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 uh final line there though he's like hey if you're not gonna do it i'm doing it yeah. no matter what yeah and she's like you do that and i'm gonna press charges and take your fucking license and all this shit I and i'm he's like he's got a pretty uh everything in her power good and argument like, and it's like what the fuck is wrong with you? So then after all this happens, mom takes Pinocchio away. He's like, that's it. Done. We're not doing this shit anymore. You're too obsessed with this doll. Yeah. Besides all, all that stuff we just said where it's now in the back of her head like, oh, fuck. What, what happened? Really? So she takes the doll and she puts it in her trunk of her right. car. And she and Zoe ends up asking Sophia, like, where where's Pinocchio? Because it, it's going it, to I'm afraid it might hurt. He might hurt mom. Right. Well, we <sighs> and, he, and Sophia goes. Oh, well, it, you, what about his conscience? You got the cricket. And she goes, oh, the cricket. She runs back into the room and the fucking cricket is killed in the box she has it in. Well, then Sophia comes to check on her because she's screaming bloody murder. Yeah. And we just get like, talk about Giallo, some Giallo ass shot of just a fire poker being lifted and whacking Sophia in the head repeatedly. Oh, my God. You think Pinhead's got that fucking poker, maybe? <laughs> There's a few characters in the MDU that got that poker. <laughs> no, not Pinhead, that Pinhead. Puppet uh, Master oh, Pinhead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, not, not the Doug Briley Pinhead. If you're really paying attention, or, you, you know, rewind it. Yeah. Like I did. <laughs> just like you, just like just, you. Just like for Deep Red. Just like Deep Red, and you spoil the yeah. whole movie well, for yourself. when we finally cover that movie, we'll get into that again. <laughs> uh, eventually, we'll, we'll yeah. cover it. Don't uh, pause Deep Red when you watch eh, Profondo Rosa. You probably, you probably shouldn't, but do what you want. Um... You can actually see it's a it's a woman's hand. Debatable if it's a little girl or a woman, but you can see a human hand holding the fire poker. Yeah, whether that's a goof or not. Right. I like to think it's intentional, kind of like if you're really paying attention. But yeah, but it's but very yeah, like, it's, it's very like it's like three frames. Yeah. You got to look for it. Uh, but yeah, Sophie is fucking dead. Beats her to death. In yeah. the, and leaves her in the fucking hallway. Yeah. 
and mom comes home. All, all because she asked her not to come in her room while she was showering. No, I don't think it's that. No, I, just, I know. I'm making a joke. I just think it, everything's become completely unhinged oh, yeah. at this point. You know what I mean? Well, the, the, Pinocchio the, told her if we get rid of her one more time with the, mom. The lines have officially blurred here, and this is the this is like the culmination of this because uh This is officially Pinocchio's revenge TN. <laughs> <laughs> uh Pinocchio's Quest DM? Like, what is he getting revenge for exactly? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, Rosalind Allen comes home and finds Sophia fucking dead in the hallway. Trips over her. Trips over her. And she's looking for Zoe. This is when the thunder starts going off and she's scared shitless. The power goes out. Right. Or no, she comes home and the fucking lights oh, are, the lights all, are off. all off. And then the fireplace the fire is, is roaring. Yeah. And there's a, there's the thundering and lightning and raining and shit out. Oh yeah, but when she finds fucking Sophia, she runs away. She's like, she's like, oh, Pinocchio's here, and she runs away. Well, she gets hit in the face with the fire poke. I know, once. I know. But Zoe runs away, and yeah. then and then she goes, Zoe, and she goes looking for her, and then out of frame, she gets fucking cracked in the head with a fucking fire poke. Okay, th- th- <sighs> this is where I start to lose like logic for this so, movie. So okay, this is what happens. She gets whacked in the head, and it's very clear, like the way that they do the camera stuff and things like it's that. Got she, a she's got a concussion. Yeah, no, fine. Okay. The little gr- then you see the little girl with the fire poker, and she's like, "What are oh, you I doing?" Got it from she's like, "I just took it from Pinocchio. He ran away. We got to get out of here." And then she runs away. Well, she goes in the bathroom now. Well, yeah, Pinocchio. I gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the fucking well, butcher knife now. Well, yeah. So, so she sees the doll appear. Is my point right? Oh, she yeah. sees the puppet appear, and now Pinocchio has the fucking knife. It's running at her. The cover. Yeah, right there. And or right there, that one. Right. Well, the one over there, the VHS is her running down the street. Yeah, her, yeah. And then we got the yeah, and then we got the fucking knife on that one. So, so now it's like a child's play and a child's play thing. Yeah. Where like it's like a very like one to one kind of Catherine Hicks getting chased by Chucky kind of thing because there's even a fucking part where she goes into the bedroom and Pinocchio's outside the door, like kicking the door and shit, yeah. and stabs. Oh yeah, the knife right. through the door. What's this like a scream scene? It's child's play, verbatim. Well, yeah, they like, both do it. Verbatim. And and she puts her hand on the fucking door, and instead of just like cutting it like Catherine Hicks, like the fucking knife goes through Rosalind Allen's well, that's, hand. That's where I think it's more like scream because they do that a couple and times. I was like, Holy but, yeah. shit. I was like, ah, that's gotta fucking hurt. But but then she has like zero reaction. She's like, ah Oh she, she gets a knife through the hand. Well, she's also got a concussion. There, her fucking adrenaline's going I, crazy. Yes. She hears Zoe out there. She's like, Zoe, get out of here. And and she hears her like run down the hallway and slam the door like she left the house. The, I, I'm sorry, but that just makes no fucking sense to me at this Why? point. I, I, she, she knows it's fucking Zoe is, is doing this. She sees her she saw, running down the hallway. She saw the puppet. I don't, Sean. I don't buy it. I think it's bullshit. She saw the puppet. What do you mean it's bullshit? Uh, well, then the puppet's grabbing her on the back at one point. Oh, it jumps on her back and does this whole thing. Um, and she's convinced that that's what she's seeing. You know, because she has right. fucking head trauma. You're right. It's just a little hard for me to wrap my head around this so, shit. So that's why we see the puppet in the in the movie, because that's what she's seeing. No, I get that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I just think it's stupid. Okay, well then say at this that. point in the movie at this point in the movie, she should have enough information that she should know it's her daughter. But I she will was I will hit give, in the head I, with the okay. fucking fire I poker. Give, I will give you that, and I will give you that she's in denial because she doesn't want to admit that her daughter has some fucking trauma. That couple together can be a very heavily influenced. Well, it's supposed to be. I, okay. It could be heavily influenced on your psyche, especially I, in the dark. And that's and then you know, all okay, that stuff. Fine. I don't like it, but you, fine. All, for all those reasons, it it works. That's fine. I don't like you're it. You're allowed to not like right. it. I'm you're, just trying to make a case. Yeah, here. no, yeah. I get what you're saying, and, and what you're saying is making sense. I'm just kind of like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know anymore. Maybe it might be a bit of a stretch, but it yes. had me for the first hour 20, and now I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. So it's like witchboard all over again. So so she thinks that Zoe's out of the house now at this mm. point. Um. And then she and then she hears Zoe in the house because right, she's going yeah. to run out and she's like, oh, Zoe, she, oh, she came back in the house. She shuts the door. The fucking puppet jumps on her back and she takes his puppet and flings it across the fucking room. And it does a backflip into a fucking glass table right through the table. Watch my triple Indy. <laughs> And then and then she finally like turns the lights on or she like collects she, herself. She turns the lights on and she sees that it's her daughter in the fucking table. And she threw her fucking daughter through Who, the table. Uh, maybe not isn't dead, but you gotta have like a broken neck or arm or something she, after that throw. She, I mean, she's knocked out. She definitely yeah. cracked her head on the side of that table. So then at the end of I the- I mean, a comatose, apparently. 
based on the next scene. Also, by the way, the third fucking movie we've covered in a couple of months with an insane asylum sequence. Also true. So we to wrap this up, we we go to the we go to this padded room, right? P- Keenan Puget and Kel, Sounds, yeah, Demonic K- Hills, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. K- Demonic Hills, Dem- <laughs> Demented Hills, Demented Hills. Yeah, Demonic Hills is a different thing. Keenan and Kel are right next door. Oh and, yeah, and uh, and uh, George Clinton. Yeah, George Clinton's there. <laughs> Stepfather's down the hall making fucking birdhouses. <laughs> the Puget Sounds a wing. Yeah, it could be yeah. in the MDU. In the it's the MDU. It's, yeah. it's the it's the Cuckoo's, Ra- Cuckoo's Nest is somewhere in there. It's the Ravencroft of the MDU. Oh, uh, okay. So or the or the Arkham Asylum, whatever you want to call right, it. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, so the doctor's there. Zoe's there. She was fucking completely catatonic. <laughs> just like not even moving. My thing with this scene is like, yeah, we don't know how long we're going to have to keep her here. She's probably going to be here indefinitely. And Rosalind Allen's like, I'll keep coming back until she's better. She's my child. I love her. And I'm like, I get it. It's like a blood rage thing almost. I, I, I get it. But now you're exhibiting mental health issues because you're clearly not coming to grips with the situation i mean and i could imagine how horrible that is and like having anything be negative not only surrounding your child but like in a state where like your child hasn't passed away or anything like that but actually but actually has like severe mental issues and has committed like murders Murders. and, and, and has to live out the rest of her life possibly in this mental facility and that that's fucked up uh, yeah because even like the doctor like when she says it is like what do you like murdered your boyfriend and like she's your, not your going caretaker. anywhere yeah she's not going anywhere she's staying here forever yeah, yeah, i almost way. killed another little girl yeah. like you know i mean uh, i mean this I is know. michael myers in the making this Straight is, up, this it's, is it's definitely that kind of situation this is what this is yeah you know like and like listen like i understand what they're trying to do because like you were just saying she's in denial she doesn't want to admit it and and creating a, a new swath of her own mental health problems yeah. or really her daughter creating them for her, but but it just kind of like continues that whole thing of her being in denial mm-hmm. like the final you know nail in the coffin at the end of the of the movie that's what i'm saying that character doesn't have uh, the 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 ending to the arc no it, it, there's no progress or there's we no, need, we, we there's no resolution too. right it's just that's it and i and i guess she's in shock and not that you need a pinocchio's revenge too i'm, I'm not asking for that but no. like it does end in a way where you're like wow this is like fucked. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. Um, and clearly, uh, the you know it was the little girl committing the murders the whole time. But like, I wanted to come back. Right. Around, which which brings it back to the the oh, Gatto case. Right. But now I want to come back around to that because I want to talk about like the supernatural element of this film versus the very real mental health issues. Well, of this cause, film. right. Because even by the end of the movie, she's still convinced the puppet had something to do with it. Yeah. She tells the doctor. He's she's like, look, I saw the puppet. I saw it move and i saw it come after me right, right. and he says well and he's like look you got hit in the yeah. fucking head you had a concussion it was dark and you clearly weren't in your right mind and you were obviously in den- still in denial about the well he kid. says straight yeah. up he's like well when did you start seeing the puppet before or after you got hit in the head and she's like after and he's, he's like, like and he's like mm, there you go yeah and it was a fire poker man it yeah, wasn't like a newspaper you got cracked upside yeah. the dome that took out sophia yeah well yeah and her fat ass <laughs> But in, in so in terms of uh, the supernatural element, like yeah. it's pretty vague in the beginning of the movie. Yes, yes, the little girl committed those murders. Yeah. But again, I like how it puts the element in there. Like, is this is this an evil thing? What was was oh, was yeah, Pinocchio yeah, yeah, yeah. the instrument of some type of demon influencing the little girl, or did she just or snap? Pray- or preying upon her because I'll, in a lot of possession cases and things, and things like that, and even poltergeist activity oh, yeah. and stuff like that, there is, there's always a child at the center of it who is, is going through like a tough time in their sure. life. So they're open to being preyed upon. Or if, like there's there's also different cases like if you're an alcoholic or things oh, like yeah, that. Like yeah. it, it, it opens you up to be influenced by these things. Yep. Which so I kind of like that element to it, but I mean, I mean, Kevin is obviously playing it straightforward. Like it, it's just a mental health issue movie, yeah. Um, and it's more in the vein of some like he set out not to make Child's Play because he didn't want to make that movie. We already have that movie. Well, it's kind of like Stepfather. They didn't want to make a slasher, right? It has as a little elements peppered throughout, but that's not what it is, right? It's and more this, of a thriller. And this and movie, just like this, I don't think this is really. They say horror on the side, but I think this is more of a thriller. It's a it's a psychological horror. I would yeah, I, I guess would say. okay, fair, yeah, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, I guess Thriller would be the sticker on the fucking box. Sure, the second, at, the yeah. second sticker. Yeah. yeah, but with the puppet on the front, it's like, oh, it's a fucking killer doll right, slasher they have movie. Have to put horror. You're not right. gonna buy it otherwise. But yeah, you know, uh, I guess, I guess, I guess before I keep going, let's. Is this on the shelf or is this in the dumpster? No, I mean it's absolutely on the shelf. Yeah. I mean, I, I listen on a first viewing. That twist at the end, like you may see it coming. But it, it is shocking. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I think it works really well. I, I'm just kind of nitpicking it because I just feel like, you know, I get what you're saying. And the movie even says it itself that she has a concussion. She's been hitting the fucking head with a fire poker. But like the end of the movie, I'm just kind of like this tension just doesn't feel real to me. Um, it is very intense. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just kind of like, all right, now nah, now nah, you're just stretching this for me. There could have been a better way to do this, in my opinion. I don't have an answer what that would be. Maybe what Kevin came up with was the only way to really make that effective. I don't know. But that last, like, ten minutes, just... It's a little too messy for me. But that doesn't, like, ruin the movie for me at all. Even, okay. though, even though I was getting kind of passionate about it. It's, it's like, you know, it's, it's like a small little blight on the film for me. And it, it doesn't even really ruin it at all. It's just kind of like, eh, I don't know about that. But, yeah, it's still very good. I would watch this again. Uh, the acting's very good throughout, and like you said earlier, the the music's pretty good in this, and the effects are amazing, and you gotta love seeing Burn in the makeup. <laughs> Wobble around. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it, it definitely, like, I definitely prefer, like, a child's play, but you're right, like, it, it's interesting that you get this, like, twist that most people probably weren't expecting, especially at the time when a lot of these movies were hot. Yeah. Or the style of horror was hot. Yeah, I mean, he was commissioned, not commissioned, but, like, he was tasked to yeah. write this and paid to write this to, to, for to capitalize on it. And, and I think he nailed it. Um, I, Again, I got some nitpicks. But overall, this is good. I still think the original title is a lot better. Agreed. Pinocchio Syndrome. Uh, maybe the Blu-ray, they'll have an uh, alternate title. <laughs> for it, could, it. it could be. Kind of cool. Uh, would love to see the Blu-ray. Again, like some of those dark scenes, especially in the, like the back half, like the scene when she's like running down the street and the ending when mom's like in the house. I would love to see those with a little bit better uh, uh, picture and get the lighting really right where nice you want it crisp. to be. Kind of like a yeah. Halloween situation. Kind of. Uh, but yeah, I, I would recommend the movie. You definitely should check it out. I mean, if you watch this review, the whole fucking thing's ruined for you. So if yeah. you haven't seen it. I think it's worth still a watch. Still it's worth, watch it's it. worth yeah. the six bucks no. on Amazon to get the fucking It YouTube. absolutely yeah. is. Uh, so yeah. Uh, this is 100% on the shelf, uh, for sure. Um, I think uh, in the pantheon of Killer doll movies or killer mm. toy movies, this fits in nice. Now, this is much more indicative of one of my favorite uh, psychological horror movies, which is Magic uh, with um, Anthony Hopkins. Sorry, I don't know oh, why okay. I just fucking brain farted on know. that. Um, uh, Anthony Hopkins is in it, and um, he has like a ventriloquist dummy, but he has a similar uh, uh, mental issue multiple oh, okay. personality thing where he personifies his ventriloquist dummy and it and he has two personalities in his head oh wow and he, you know they go back and forth mm -hmm. one is like you know like in, a smeagol kind of thing almost kind of which is puppet. which is going on here and i feel like kevin was trying to kind of channel that with this rather than make it like a straightforward uh child's play movie or like tiny terror movie yeah and i mean i mean again you like the first hour and change you really uh, unless you're some fucking like sleuth, you really don't know what the no, deal is. And, and I think I think Kevin effectively like not only like writes it well, but also directs it well um, mm. and puts it together well. A lot and, of really and, amazing and, shots. Yeah, in a cohesive and and nicely unraveling story that goes and it keeps you guessing, especially if you've saw it, if you've never seen it. Um, but even after repeat viewings, I think the structure of it is still really good and mm. and and it all still holds up and makes sense and and feels good in, in terms of pacing and how it unravels and how mm. we get delivery. Rosalind Allen, I think she's great, but her, again, her character, like we've mentioned uh, yeah, throughout this review, her fault. it's not her fault, but like it, she is a little too turning a blind eye to everything, you know, but I guess that's the nature of the character and I guess it works because of that. Like I said, as much as I'm like shitting on this character, it kind of makes sense. Like, put yourself in her shoes. Of course, you're going to probably deny your daughter's murdering people. But yeah. like, I just some of the logic jumps are just too much yeah, for me. But it also makes sense for like why she's divorced. And like, it, it, yeah. it, it, it all aids the case for the little girl to have mental issues. Dad's probably like, thank God and have her live with me. Oh, Jesus. Um. Well, he's yeah, he tries to con con contact with the whole movie. She doesn't want to talk to him. Yeah. Because she, well, I'm saying if the roles are reversed. Yeah, she's upset with him. Yeah. So, um, 
but yeah, I, again, like I was saying, like this is more like a like a like a magic for me, but it fits nice right in there with Child's Play and mm. Dolls and Dolly Dearest and all three of those movies. Uh, and for or excuse me, for these movies and even magic, they're all they got a little different flavor of everything. Mm-hmm. And, and I like that because even though Pinocchio in the movie, in this movie and, and maybe fats in magic aren't alive, per se, they're still crucial character characters in the film and are prominent in the psychology of telling that story. Yeah. So it's almost like they're real. Oh, yeah. In the movie. You know what I mean? So. um I think I think if I think it's I think it's fucking great. I I think this is one of Kevin's better films. Uh, Night of the Demons, of course, is great for an entirely different reason of uh, uh, reason than this is. Yeah. Um. Like uh, clearly, Night of the Demons is like you know that gory kind of spooky demon haunted house movie, and this is very much psychological, more like Hitchcocky kind of yeah uh, feeling. This also would be like just not not to cut you off, but like this would be a great film for people that are into like that subgenre of horror, like like your Chucky's and stuff like that. But like, hey, you've seen have you seen this though? Well, I you can know see, what I mean. I can see them being disappointed with this because uh, Pinocchio is not necessarily yeah, a, that's true. a real that's true. thing. Like I can ha- I could see it having like the, the village effect oh, God. on them with the old switcheroo. Yeah. But the way that this works and pans out, this is actually what's funny about this movie is that it actually pans out the way that Don Mancini originally intended Child's Play to be. Oh, really? Yeah, because um, like it's all in Andy's head. Y- yeah, because Tom Holland, uh, well, it's it was Andy originally. Oh, okay. So again, it was it, w- it was pretty much this movie, but like Tom Holland changed it so that it was actually Charles E. Ray's soul going into the doll and being uh, a killer. Which thank God, thank God, because like <laughs> because that movie is just so fucking like the first Charles yeah, plays really classic, excellent man. and like coupled with Brad Dorf and Kevin. I mean, it's iconic. Gotta Clearly, imagine Andy coming I mean, back still- out of the fire and his fucking body's like getting blown up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but we're still we're still talking about Chucky today, oh, yeah, and there's yeah. still more. They're making Chuck, more. They're making more like merchandise in the, in the TV in the, shows, in the TV and show, and shit like that. Never ends. Do I need to see it? Not really, but <laughs> it's for somebody who likes it, and oh, that's, yeah, and that's fine. Um, I really do this movie a lot, and uh, I I. I think it's great, and it, I would definitely recommend it. Pick up that fucking DVD for for six bucks, and I and I would love to see this uh, put on blue again. The seller, uh, Vin- Vinegar Syndrome, put out the seller, mm-hmm. and that was only like like Kevin came in to finish that movie, right? This is actually I think it's a rights issue. I think Lionsgate might own this. Uh, I think Trimark uh, was bought by Lionsgate because I think they own some of the Leprechaun movies, if I'm not mistaken. However, Shout Factory has access to all of the um, Lionsgate catalog. So maybe we'll see Pinocchio's Revenge soon. Maybe uh, Michael Felcher's uh, 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 Red Shirt Pictures might fucking champion this movie and bring bring it to light. Get Kevin Tenney on and let, let's get a nice uh, little Blu-ray. Oh, commentary it, track or something? Yeah, like, commentary maybe, track. Maybe a movie dumpster uh, on the commentary track. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe have us in those fucking special movies. That'd be, that'd be pretty sweet. But like, I mean, there's plenty of people to talk to you still around. Like Rosalind Allen oh, would yeah. be great and... and uh, uh, um, Gabe Bartolo. Sure, the little can girl. Talk about I, don't, I don't know if she's acting still, but maybe she I don't be, think so. Yeah, well, you can throw throw the offer out there. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, this movie fucking rules, and uh, definitely check it out for yeah. sure. A uh, couple of things I just want to add before we wrap that yeah, up. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, some MDU shit I forgot to mention that oh. I just thought of. Okay, uh, you talking about Good Burger at the end there? Yeah, you know. Okay, real quick, an addendum on Good Burger. How also. are you going? How are you going to wrap this up? Let's see. Okay. Uh, well, first of all. We missed something on Good Burger that a fan pointed out. Apologies if I don't remember your name, but apparently Heather Linda Card- Cardinelli, Linda Sh- Cardellini. Cardellini, yeah, whatever, Cardellini. Uh, she shows she shows up at the end. Uh, uh, what's her face from Scooby Doo? Yes, Velma. Uh, Velma. Uh, she's at the end when they're like got, got Ed on their shoulder. So there's that for anyone that saw the Good Burger episode or the movie. Uh, but we were talking about what the hell happens to her and the crazy guy at the end of the movie. Yes, they don't, scary they don't guy. Escape. Or whatever the fuck Yeah, his name yeah, is. the serial killer guy. Yeah. I think after she's put in this fucking place, she's got her new Pino. Big scary guy. So they get out. You think he's a robot? You think he might be? He might have been made by Joe Pesci. You, you think Mickey Rooney built that fucking thing? Yeah, him and him and Pino he, are outside he, waiting with the escape car. He was a film experiment. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's their Frankenstein. Yeah, it could be. Which again, that movie's kind of a Frankenstein movie. It by is the a way. Frankenstein Silent movie. Silent Night, Deadly Night Five. We check out the episode. It's awesome. Anyway, that was that was mostly it. I had something else. Totally lost it. Well, I love it. 
Uh, yeah, definitely go back and check out that Good Burger episode in Ghoulies Three. Yes, um, we got we got some good stuff coming up for you. We got we got a we're trying something a little different with the next episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be Sinjinor and Scared to Death back to back. Fucking Mister Sinjinor up on the up on the uh, wall there. It's coming down. We're gonna talk about that movie and and how Scared to Death kind of became Sinjinor and how it's like a spiritual successor and how the movies are connected. We're gonna check out that beautiful uh, Vinegar Syndrome release of uh, Scared to Death, the restoration of that film from the sixteen millimeter negative. So that's gonna be really fun to talk about and kind of dive into. But we're gonna try a little something different because we're gonna do two movies in one. It's not gonna be an extra long thing. It's gonna be a condensed version, but comprehensive. About the production yeah. and things like that. So we're going to give it a shot and see, see, see what you guys think of that and that that's something you like. Um, and we thought it would be more... We thought it would be better because Sinjinor is such a great movie and Scared to Death is too. And I feel like you can't talk about one without the other. And I feel like it would be a disservice to not talk about them both at the same time rather than just mentioning Scared... Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, scared yeah. to Death, you know? So, so that's coming up. Uh, also, don't forget... Uh, next month, we are going to be a part of Crypt Video Rentals. Mm. October 22nd and 23rd. October 22nd and 23rd, 8 p.m. at the Philomoca, hosted by uh, tapes from our friend Tim Nugent from Tapes yes. from the Crypt and Retro Release Video. They're putting on a hell of a show sponsored by Fangoria. Tony from Hack the Movies is going to be there. I think Shudder is sponsoring it now, too. So we'll be there. We'll have our table. I, we're they're going to be there. I don't know if we're going to have a table. I think we're going to have a table. And if we do have a table, there's going to be stuff you can get. And you come can find us. Come find <laughs> us. Come meet us. If we if we don't have a table, we'll be we'll be hanging out. You know, yeah. we're, we're definitely sponsoring the event. So uh, definitely check it out. Get your tickets now. Uh, you can go to philomoka.org to get your tickets. Or you can go to moviedumpsterpodcast.com and right in our uh, link tree, right at the top, you'll see the Crypt Video Rentals link. And that'll take you right to get your tickets. So uh, definitely grab them. They have VIP passes you can grab. We're going to have a fucking awesome time uh matt cannon from lapses yes. is gonna be there he did our talks on the dark side theme who's working on something very fucking cool that we got coming up for november him and davy uh the scaredy cat to foreign uh are doing some stuff for a very special episode we're gonna have um can't wait for that one yes uh but uh but yeah definitely be there check it out grab your ticks and uh and yeah it's gonna be an awesome time and uh, before you get out of here, like this video if you have not already. You know, if you're watching on YouTube. Yep. Uh, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on your podcast yeah. app. And, you know, there's Spotify, there's Google Podcasts, there's Stitcher. There, there's about a million of them. I think there's uh, Good Pods is out there. there there's a L bunch of... There's a bunch of ways to show your support without yes. having to spend a dime. Exactly. You so hit that five star, five stars and you leave a review. And it really helps us get out of the bottom of the dumpster into more <laughs> eardrums, <laughs> eyeballs and everything in between. For sure. And uh, if you want to support us financially, you can either head over to moviedumpster.com and check out the store. We got T-shirts on there. We got T-shirts. We got some hats. We're going to have so we're going to have our uh, winter collection back yes. up soon with uh, sweatshirts and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, our trick or trash collection, I'm sure we'll be back soon, yes. too, as we get closer to October. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, getting chilly out. You know, you yeah, need a little, little sweater, man. You need one of those fucking knit caps. All right. It's getting there. It's getting yeah. there. And uh, or you can go to Patreon.com slash Movie Dumpster. We've got a ton of stuff on there. More coming Two, five and ten dollar tiers. What do you get on your two dollar tier? Ah, uh, you get mini sods, uh, which are just basically short format episodes, and uh, you also get access to our mailbag series, junk mail. Mm -hmm. New one coming soon. Oh yeah, uh, five dollar tier, you get that plus a movie dumpster sticker pack, and you also get access to our commentary tracks. Uh, and the full back catalog. Yes, of commentary right. tracks. So, so like when you sign up, not only do you get the new content, you get everything in the back catalog, which is a lot of content. Uh, you also get uh, archives or replays of our, our watch along series where we watch a movie and hang out for. Our, yeah. For our, uh, that, yeah, yep, five, five and ten. And, ten, and then uh, <laughs> I don't even know my own fucking <laughs> Patreon. What's he think I look like? A jackass. That's a long day. Anyway. Uh, and uh, for, for, for ten dollars here, you also get all that plus a T-shirt. Movie Dunster t-shirt and a glow in the dark movie dancer pin. Yep. And so, so you're getting the commentary tracks, you're getting the fucking live watch longs, you're getting all that good stuff, uh, plus the junk mails and the mini sods. Um, so yeah. Oh, and for anyone that cares, I wore an Usopp shirt from One Piece because he's kind of based on Pinocchio because he's got a long nose. I meant to mention it like an hour ago. Is he fucking somebody with that nose, you think? <laughs> he would honestly probably be very disturbed by that whole scenario. I'll, I'll be honest. But there's some hentai of it, so you know, go look that. So that's it. That's Pinocchio's Revenge from 1996, directed by Kevin S. Tenney. 
I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster.